Welcome to Fanfiction Uploads your ultimate destination for immersive anime audiobooks. Are you a fan of anime and love diving deep into captivating stories? You've come to the right place. Here on Fanfiction Uploads, we bring you high-quality audiobooks based on your favorite anime series. Whether you're commuting, relaxing at home, or just need a break, our audiobooks will transport you into the world of anime like never before. At Fanfiction Uploads, we offer professionally narrated and carefully selected audiobooks that cover a wide range of genres and series, from action-packed adventures to heartfelt romances. With new episodes and stories uploaded frequently, there's always something fresh to enjoy. Join our community. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Connect with fellow anime enthusiasts in the comments section, share your thoughts, and let us know which stories you want to hear next. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Sit back, relax, and let the stories unfold. Welcome to Fanfiction Uploads where anime comes to life. Punk Hassett's Underground Research Institute The walls that prevent enemy invasion have been badly damaged. The ground was littered with tattered ruins and fallen guards. Wei A A who is your boy, do you know what is the end of offending Lao Tzu? Behind Lao Tzu stands that His Majesty the Seven Marshal sees Da Flamingo. Deep in the laboratory, the silver-haired young man stepped on Caesar's head. Caesar struggled like a madman, aren't you afraid of the man Da Flamingo? Afraid? A coldness flashed in the young man's eyes, let's introduce yourself first, my name is Barbos. Barbos. Caesar thought for a moment and said unexpectedly, that bounty hunter Barbos in the North Sea. Barbos nodded. Lao Tzu has not been to Baha'i, and he doesn't know you, let alone offend you, you have found the wrong person. Caesar hastened to explain. I really don't have any contradictions with you, but I have a big deal with the old man behind your scenes. Barbos said indifferently, many years ago, my hometown was destroyed by that guy, everyone is a simple and honest fisherman, and there are no coveted resources on the island. Even so, the villagers were doomed, thousands of people, including my parents, were killed, and only I escaped. Caesar sweated profusely and begged for mercy, that's what Da Flamingo provoked you, and it has nothing to do with me. Don't forget, you're also a pirate, or a subordinate of that guy in Da Flamingo. Pirates. They don't deserve to live in the world. Barbosa's eyes emitted a brutal purple light. Bang bang. Way a a a. The left cheek was forcibly crushed, and Caesar let out a bitter scream. You bastard wait for me, Da Flamingo will definitely not let you go, absolutely. Caesar shouted angrily, and Kaido, Kaido will not spare you. Barbos was expressionless, and a terrifying purple light appeared all over his body. Under this terrifying momentum, Caesar's soul trembled. That cold and emotionless look does not seem to be owned by human beings at all, and he can't wait to destroy everything in the world. Barbos withdrew from Caesar, and the guy quickly took a big breath. Fang Cai's deadly sense of oppression was so terrifying that his breathing stopped. It's time for you to hit the road, Caesar. The words from hell rang in my ears. Caesar's whole body trembled, and just as he was about to open his mouth to beg for mercy, a terrifying force came from Barbos. Caesar floated uncontrollably into the air, covered in purple light. You what are you going to do? Caesar panicked like a chicken and screamed, I didn't lie to you. Whether it is Da Flamingo or Kaido, the artificial devil fruit that I need to study, and Aunt, she also hired me to study the gigantic drug, if Uncle Ben dies, Aunt's research funds will be equivalent to waste, aren't you afraid? That's two four emperors. Afraid? I was determined to end this era of stupid sea thieves. Barbos was indifferent, his thumb lightly touching the void, destruction. Click. 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 Caesar's whole body was dismembered, turning into countless particles and disappearing with the wind. Wait, Da Flamingo, this is just the beginning. Don't say it's the four emperors, 
even if there is a heavenly king Laozi standing behind you, he will die. The anger in Barbosa's eyes did not abate. Previously, Barbos did not have the ability to take revenge, but three years ago, he accidentally ate a god-level demon fruit cat cat fruit, phantom beast species, and destruction god form. After three years of hard training, Barbos also made a name for himself on the sea. Two days ago, he resolutely came to the new world to take revenge. Then again, the reason why Doflamingo destroyed Barbos's hometown back then is also ridiculous. It was because he faced the defeat of the navy and was chased by Vice Admiral Tsuru all over the world, and he was incompetent and furious and vented on the hometown of Barbos. On that day, if Barbos had not gone fishing in the far seas, it was estimated that it would have been a dead end. Since the heavens let him accidentally eat the cat fruit, phantom beast species, and destruction god form, Barbos must use the power of destruction to destroy every pirate. It is worth mentioning that Barbos also has a little secret the crosser. When he didn't cross before, he also admired the straw hats very much, admired the benevolence and righteousness of the white bearded, and liked the pirates' pursuit of freedom and advocating the spirit of adventure. But when he actually came into the world, Barbos felt that he had been wrong before. Most of the pirates burned and looted in the name of freedom, and did all kinds of evil. The so-called freedom and adventure are also entirely based on the suffering of others. After getting Caesar, Barbos swept towards the wall on the left. Bang bang! Punching hard, the thick wall was suddenly shattered. On the other side is also a secret room, where a large number of precision instruments are exposed, and there are many utensils, all of which are two or three-year-old children. All of them lost their breath, some had huge heads, and some had thick legs like giants, which were caused by Caesar's gigantic experiment. Barbos glanced cursorily, but none of them survived. The coldness in his eyes was even worse, still not coming out. The words fell, and a graceful figure walked out from behind many obstacles. This woman is tall and sexy, with long light green hair hanging down to her waist and a beautiful face, her appearance and figure are completely explosive to those female stars in her previous life. She was Caesar's secretary, Monet. Of course, this is only in name, but Monet is actually Da Flamingo's man, who has been in charge of monitoring Caesar. It is worth mentioning that Monet has not been transformed and still maintains his human appearance. You always knew I was here. Monet's beautiful eyes were full of surprise. Barbos was too lazy to respond, and asked lightly, You told Da Flamingo about the situation here. Hey! The corners of Monet's lips rose slightly, Why, I'm afraid. Don't you have a blood feud with the Joker? To keep you alive is to inform the Don Quixote family to send heads. When the call is over, your mission is over. Barbos pointed his finger at the void and lightly tapped, Destruction. Monet was shocked and hurriedly elementalized, turning into a piece of goose feathers and dispersing the snow. However, the fart did not use, the purple light chased in the air, and the snowflakes that came into contact with it disappeared. Barbos is not domineering, and compared with the power of destruction, domineering is meaningless. Even if it is the elementalization of a natural ability, he can annihilate it by using destruction. In this world, there is no destruction of substances that cannot be annihilated. After getting Monet and Caesar, Barbos went around the lab again and rescued many surviving children. These children all have a unified characteristic, some parts of the body are gigantic, especially the head. Barbos couldn't do anything about it, so he could only dial the Navy's phone worm. It is undeniable that there are some corrupt elements in the Navy, but the vast majority of people still have justice in mind. Two hours later, several warships approached the sea in the distance. Without exception, all come from the Don Quixote family. Which idiot did it? It provoked the young lord to be furious. On deck, Toripol and Pika talk. Both were senior officials of the Don Quixote family. The two have learned that Caesar and Monet's life card has burned out. Annoyed. Da Flamingo almost ran away, and if Toripol and Pika hadn't volunteered, 
he would have killed him. According to Monet's previous report, it seems to be a bounty hunter named Barbos, strange, the family does not seem to have offended that guy. Pika's voice was sharp like that of a eunuch. Whoever offends the Don Quixote family will die. Looking at the nearby punk Hasid, Toripol waved his hand, and the pirates jumped off the ship. Toripol and Pika and others followed. The group added up to more than a hundred, but the core cotters of the Don Quixote family were only Toripol and Pika, and the others were some unruly vassals. Of course, there are grassroots cotters like Buffalo, although they are also cotters, from the perspective of strength and status, they are still unpopular goods in the Don Quixote family. Bulua Bru Bru. The phone worm in his arms suddenly rang, and Toribol pressed the answer button, Young Lord. Toripol, don't kill that kid, take it to dress Rosa, I'll torture him personally. Da Flamingo's voice was extremely low, and even the expression of the phone bug was particularly terrifying. Don't worry. Pika let out a weird laugh, me and Torbal broke that guy's limbs first, and then handed it over to you to play. Boom. The furious airflow hit head on, and the sky turned deep purple. Bang bang bang. The pirate in the front, his body exploded uncontrollably. Wow. Hmm. Pika and Toribol also screamed one after another, and their legs seemed to be broken, and they knelt weakly on the ground. Pika. Toripol. The voice inside the phone worm was raised a few notches, and Da Flamingo was anxious. Caesar has already been lost, and if Toripol and Pika are also lost, it is equivalent to losing his right arm. I thought it was Da Flamingo Ben's uncoming, it turned out to be two unruly clowns. An indifferent voice came not far away. Pika and Toribol looked up, and Barbos approached with his hands in his pockets, his steps as casual as a leisurely stroll. His body was surrounded by heavy purple light, and the ominous purple that spread in the atmosphere came from his body. What kind of power is this? Pika was stunned, unable to move just by relying on his momentum. It should be overlord colored domineering. Tori Pole guessed uncertainly. This is the coercion of the god of destruction, less overlord color to touch porcelain. Barbos looked down at the two condescendingly, his indifferent eyes as if looking at a dead man. Pika and Toribol were shocked, and this time they seemed to have kicked the iron plate. Answer me, what kind of divine, you boy? Da Flamingo in the phone bug roared, Barbos. Lao Tzu did not offend this person in his memory. It doesn't matter who I am, hear me clearly, Da Flamingo. Barbos looked at the phone worm coldly, all you have to do is to quickly go to take a bath, wash your body and wait for death. Da Flamingo on the other side of the phone bug yelled, Damn guys, you won't destroy. The purple halo covered the phone worm and instantly decomposed into slag. Pika and Toribol look at each other, what kind of evil ability is this? Can't really talk. Toribol shrunk his neck and asked in a trembling voice, Don't underestimate us Don Quixote, it's good that we are also wow. The purple energy fell on the body, and Toribol also dissipated little by little. You bastard! Pika saw that the situation was not good, and his body sank into the earth for the first time. Seeing this, Barbos couldn't help but frown. Ha ha ha, be careless, stupid, Lao Tzu is a stone fruit. Pika's sharp voice burst out from the ground, as long as Lao Tzu hides underground, you can't do anything to me, unless you blow up this island. Barbos smiled slightly, then blow punk acid flat as you wish. Barbos soared into the air, and an overwhelming purple light floated out of his body, covering the huge punk acid. Sabotage. Another simple word fell, and the huge punk acid was like burnt paper, quickly dispersing, cautiously sending a small part of the soil to Barbos to step on. There are many strong people in this world, and there are countless strong people who can sink islands. But after sinking the island, most of them will have wreckage left, but the power of destruction is completely different, directly erasing the huge punk acid, and even the kind that does not leave the wreckage. Oh devil! Buzz! 
there was a roar in the sky, somewhat similar to the sound of helicopter propellers. Barbos looked up and saw that it was Buffero who flew into the distance, there is still a fish that slipped through the net, but it's a pity that you can't run away. A terrifying ball of energy was condensed and thrown into the sky. Bang! With a loud bang falling, Buffalo disappeared and even the blue sky showed a hundred meters of black holes. Even the sky has been erased by the power of destruction and cannot be restored forever. After getting Don Quixote and his gang, Barbos was not in a hurry to leave. Because there are still quite a few children to hand over to the Navy. Time passed in a hurry, and hours passed in the blink of an eye. On the horizon, a number of naval warships finally appeared. Where's Punk Hassid? Many navies were taken aback, such a big island, very strange human evaporation. Drive the boat over and take a look. Virgo, who was then a major general, ordered loudly. Years earlier, Virgo had been sent undercover in the navy by Da Flamingo. Currently, mixed into a rear admiral. Two years after the original book, Virgo was even more mixed into the position of lieutenant general. After the navy warship approached, it finally saw a small dirt slope of less than 20 square meters on the former site of Punk Hassid. Barbos greeted him kindly, Welcome to Punk Hassid, the pirates have been dealt with by me, these children can be picked up by the navy. Barbos pointed to the children behind him. At the same time, Virgo squeezed out of the crowd and stood at the forefront of the navy. And Barbos also saw this guy for the first time, and his eyes immediately showed bloodthirsty killing intent. You say it's Punk Hassid. Virgo looked at the small dirt slope with a large palm, and couldn't help but doubt life a little. Punk Hassid he came, and even the children who were used for gigantic experiments were abducted by Virgo. Such a big island, there is so much left. Come on, arrest this guy for me. Virgo suddenly shouted loudly, and this sudden order made the adjutant on the side stunned. Rear Admiral Virgo, it seems that he informed the Navy. You know what? Virgo glanced at the adjutant coldly, pirates often use some despicable means in order to clear their suspicions, do you think I can't see it? Virgo added, Barbos, you'd better not act rashly, before I came, I asked the Navy headquarters for help, the Admiral is on the way here you trafficker can't escape. Barbos smiled dumbly, and said straight to the point, very good at playing, reduce your own risk, let the Navy come out to deal with me, it should be Da Flamingo who came up with such a bad idea. Virgo's pupils sparkled, but immediately dissipated. Human traffickers, you actually dare to frame the Navy, give me a hand. Virgo waved his hand, shoot. The Navy hesitantly raised their guns, and the commander's orders had to be obeyed. Barbos sneered, Da Flamingo was cunning, once he attacked the navy, he would be wanted in the future. Bang bang bang! The bullets that were as dense as a rainstorm shot out, and the moment they were about to be hit, with a bang, the field of destruction opened, and the bullet disintegrated into nothingness. Even the guns in the hands of the soldiers disappeared. Virgo was dumbfounded, what the hell is this ability? Swish. Barbos landed on the warship, ignored the surrounding naval soldiers, and swept towards Virgo step by step. The breath of death rushed to his face, and Virgo's fighting spirit collapsed. It was as if it was a god of death. Without hesitation, he jumped and dived into the deep sea. Under the water, Virgo swung his limbs and swam towards the distance, thinking secretly in his heart, that purple power is very outrageous. It seems to be able to annihilate some, but if you jump into the water, you should not be able to attack. Barbos looked at the sea expressionlessly, his palm opened, and the purple ball of light condensed again. Thrown towards the sea, countless rays of light penetrated into the deep sea. With his dry mouth opening slightly, Barbos whispered, Destruction. Boom. The sea water in a radius of hundreds of meters evaporated in the blink of an eye. The damp soil beneath the deep sea is undoubtedly revealed. Oh my god, what kind of monster is this? Outrageous, how can even sea water be extinguished? This guy must have the strength of a general. 
it's too strong, don't fight back, or we'll be killed. The eyes of the navy were full of panic, and they stared at Barbos one by one in horror. Fortunately, his ruthlessness and hatred were aimed at the pirates, and he actually had a good impression of the navy Barbos, and did not embarrass the navy, handed over the children to the navy, and flew to dress Rosa. The destructive power condensed on the solace of his feet can make him walk on the ground in the air. Dress Rosa Since Doflamingo took possession of this place, the country seems to be a sea of joy, full of love and passion. This is not the case, and this is all superficial. Those who disobeyed were turned into toys by Doflamingo's men. The highest point of Dress Rosa, the King's Highland, is also the location of the Royal Palace. Doflamingo locked himself in the room, and this moment of effort, lost many lovers. Monet, Toripol, Picard and Virgo, whose life card had just burned out, and most importantly, Caesar, each of them was extremely important to Doflamingo. Barbos, no matter who you are or who is standing behind you, Lao Tzu will smash your corpse into ten thousand pieces and crush your bones. Doflamingo, who was crouching in the corner, looked up, and his entire cheeks and even his head were bruised. Bang bang! Debris splashed everywhere and walls were forcibly penetrated. The corners of Doflamingo's mouth twitched, he was already in a bad mood, and now an idiot who doesn't open his eyes has jumped out? Who the hell is it? After seeing the comer clearly, the anger and murderous intent on Doflamingo's face converged, why are you here? The man in front of him has a tiger back and a bear's waist, and his height is an astonishing 830 centimeters. What nonsense, you should not forget what day it is, Joker. The strong man snorted coldly with dissatisfaction, it seems that you kid does not take the deal with our hundred beast pirate group seriously at all. That's right, the one who came was Jack of Drought, one of the three plagues of the hundred beast pirates, and the bounty reached a staggering one billion bailey. At the mention of the words hundred beast pirates, the unhappiness on Doflamingo's face was swept away, and he said with a smile, today is the delivery day of the artificial devil fruit, how can I forget such an important day? That's good. Jack looked at the empty throne and sat down on it. Although Doflamingo was not happy, he did not squeak. As one of the four emperors of the New World, the Hundred Beast Pirate Group wants to destroy him, this Seven Marshall Sea, it is too simple, and he doesn't even need Kaido's hand, and his three plagues can lead people to destroy him. Jack chirped and nibbled on the apple, five billion bailey has been handed over to your subordinates, you immediately let people move the devil fruit, and my mammoth is parked in the port. Doflamingo nodded, and then sighed helplessly, help me tell Kaido, I'm afraid this is the last transaction. Hearing this, Jack's face instantly shrugged down, why? Boss Kaido knows about this, and I promise Dress Rosa will be sunk. In the new world, no one dares to refuse us. Click. 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 Jack roared, and the sound wave shattered the glass. Spicy next door, call you, call you, make you look like Kaido. Doflamingo was angry, but there was still nothing he could do. He paused and explained, Caesar, who studied the artificial devil fruit, has been killed by a certain man. Who did it? Jack was furious, and a large amount of blood spread in his pupils. Doflamingo couldn't help but be happy when he saw this, this Jack was really a muscular reckless man with no brains at all. Casually threw the bait out, and the kid himself took the bait. The man's name is Barbos, and according to my estimation, he is currently on his way to dress Rosa. Doflamingo said. Humph, a nobody, actually dares to break the transaction of our hundred beast pirate group, that guy is here, the immortals can't save him. Jack clenched his strangely shaped curved blade, I'm going to cut off his dog's head. It should be said that Jack, who relies on the ability of the boat fruit, although the strength of the dish is to death, whether it is facing Ant or Fujitora or warring states, he has almost never been intimidated. As for Barbos, a guy with zero bounties, he naturally won't be afraid. In the waters near the former punk Hasid, 
several naval ships gathered. The man on the deck looked at the vanished punk Hassid thoughtfully. It seems that the Marshal of the Warring States was right, and he sent two generals at once, and the young man named Barbos is really extraordinary. A sharp color flashed in Chi Inu's eyes, looked at the battleship next to him, and couldn't help but be speechless, who is not good, it's this guy who cooperates with the old man. I feel the same way, Sakaski, who is not good, but you cooperate with me. Listening to this yin and yang strange voice, Chi Inu's cold gaze suddenly swept over. The rest of the navy lowered their heads one by one, and the atmosphere did not dare to breathe. The person who dares to scare the admiral must also be an admiral. On the battleship next to him, the green pheasant lazily put his hands in his pockets and frowned. Can Punk Hassid quietly erase, the other party's strength, it is estimated that they are also at the same level. At first, I thought that sending two generals was a big fuss, but now it seems that the warring states are prescient. Cusin, the old man doesn't want to quarrel with you, our business, we'll count it later. Ignoring the pheasant, the red dog ordered the warship to rush towards Dress Rosa. That's what I thought. The green pheasant responded lightly, and the warship also moved towards Dress Rosa. Virgo's men said, and Barbos flew towards Dress Rosa. It's a shame. Regret flashed across the red dog's resolute face. Barbos, a bounty hunter wandering in the North Sea, many people in the Navy headquarters are also thunderous, for no other reason, just because he hunted too many pirates with a reward of more than 100 million, and with his own strength, he once made the North Sea the rarest sea area for pirates. The Navy has also studied this person, his family is very clean, and the reason why he is cruel to pirates is because of the painful experience of his youth, his hometown was destroyed by Don Quixote's gang, and thousands of people died tragically. That is, because of this, Barbos hates pirates extremely much, and his hands are extremely dark-hearted, rarely leaving a living mouth, or he lacks an arm and a broken leg, which gives him the title of Pirate Butcher. The reason why the Red Dog feels a pity is because the top of the Navy has already developed a heart for Barbos, and the strong combat power coupled with the hatred of pirates is not a natural Navy. Akainu himself also appreciates Barbos very much, the two act too similarly, have the same philosophy, and have absolute zero tolerance for pirates. However, now because of Virgo's tragic death, the Navy had to arrest Barbos. Swish. On the sea, a figure flew by rapidly. Looking at the island getting closer and closer, the aura of destruction on Barbosa's body became more and more intense. Da Flamingo, today next year will be your death day. Boom. 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 The coercion of the god of destruction swept through Dress Rosa, and before the pirates below could even see who the murderer was, they exploded and died, exploding into a cloud of blood mist. Barbos rushed straight to the heights of kings, and the majestic palace standing there was his goal. Da Flamingo, who was dining with Jack, naturally felt a strong aura approaching. What kind of power is this, and why is my body shaking uncontrollably? Da Flamingo felt creepy inexplicably, and he couldn't grasp the knife and fork. Overlord color domineering? It shouldn't be even if those four emperors who have cultivated their domineering chi to the extreme, their domineering will not be so strong. He subconsciously looked at Jack, this guy who can only fight with his mouth, he is not strong, and he is sweating. Bang! With a loud rumbling sound, a large explosion occurred in the royal palace. A large palace was blown to pieces. Barbo stopped above the royal capital, and multiple energy balls in his hand were thrown downward, and the palace collapsed one after another. Among them, it can also take the lives of many pirates. Bastard, stop me! Da Flamingo flew from the air, although he was afraid of Barbosa's strength, looked at the palace that had been reduced to ashes, and could not even see the corpses of many cotters, Da Flamingo's heart was bleeding. Decades of accumulation were harvested by Barbos in a moment. Da Flamingo forced himself to endure his monstrous anger, you are that Barbos? 
Barbos glanced at Da Flamingo lightly, have you finished taking a bath, if you haven't washed now, you will die soon. The corners of Da Flamingo's mouth twitched, even if he is not a top powerhouse on the sea, he is also a seven martial sea, you look down on me so much. Going head to head is not good for anyone, it will only be cheaper for others. Da Flamingo said in a deep voice, if you are willing to leave, I can get away with it. Young Lord, what are you talking about? He's about to kill everyone. Unbelievable. Is the young master afraid? The remaining pirates are incredible. Barbos also laughed when he heard this, and mocked, Da Flamingo, you also know to be afraid? Da Flamingo clenched his fists, of course he wanted to smash Barbos's corpse into ten thousand pieces, but he was not so sure. What's more, there is no need to go out in person in this matter. Caesar is dead, whether it is Ant or Kaido, they will not spare Barbos, just do it themselves, why risk their lives and fight hard? The battle between us, whoever wins, will only let others pick up the cheap. Da Flamingo's voice softened, Punk Hassid's thing, I can. As if it didn't happen. Syllable. When the words fell, Da Flamingo did not resist slaking himself. It's so provocative. Ha 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 ha. Barbos grinned, you said it didn't happen if it didn't happen. When you destroyed my hometown, thousands of people died at your hands, you say forget it. Hearing this, Da Flamingo frowned tightly, thought carefully, and shook his head. He did too many similar things, I really can't remember it clearly. You really want to break the net. Da Flamingo clenched his fists. Barbos was expressionless, no need to talk nonsense, let's do it. Da Flamingo's face instantly turned as vicious as a devil, ignorant idiot, you will die. Super Strike Whip Multiple thin threads condensed into a pillar in his hand, and the armed color domineering wrapped around it, and Da Flamingo slashed at Barbos in anger. I have already lowered my posture, this bastard is still entangled, damn it. Barbos raised his arm and waited for the moment the pillar chopped down, and suddenly grabbed it. Bang! The thigh-thick thread pillar stopped overhead, and Barbos caught it with an easy look. Don't think this is the end. This simple and calm appearance deeply angered Da Flamingo. The earth turned white, and after the dense lines gathered, they rose up into the sky. Great wave white line. Barbosa's expression remained unchanged, and the purple light of his fingertips spread across the heavens and the earth, destruction. Before the line could get close, it dissipated in midair. Da Flamingo was stunned and said puzzled, what kind of ability is this? Barbosa's gaze swept towards Da Flamingo, not in a hurry to kill him. This guy is notoriously cruel and likes to make some people crippled, missing arms and legs. Perhaps influenced by Da Flamingo, Barbos had a similar hobby. Boom! The purple light was desperately released, and the sky above Dress Rosa was affected, revealing a beautiful purple sky. However, Da Flamingo really could not appreciate it and the moment this coercion spread, he was like carrying a mountain and struggling. Have you ever thought you have today? There was a cold questioning overhead, and Da Flamingo looked up, and Barbos was close at hand, looking down on him condescendingly. Da Flamingo did not panic at all, but Buddha Buddha laughed strangely, stupid, you are deceived. Bang bang! The earth under Da Flamingo's feet suddenly cracked and his burly body broke through the earth. The deadly machete raised approached Barbos in an instant. Jack had a wicked smile on his face, as if he had seen the scene of the separation of the corpse. However, the dazzling purple light immediately filled Jack's eyes. Sabotage. The simple words fell, and Jack's hands immediately became empty. His smile converged, where is Lao Tzu's weapon? Having lost his weapon, he also changed from a sneak attack to a head. The thick heavy fist hammer came, and the black shadow smashed vertically towards the earth. Bang bang! Debris splattered everywhere, and Jack lay in pain in the giant pit. The left cheek completely collapsed, and even the metal mask was shattered. Hoo hoo! 
Barbos blew into his fist, fooled. I felt so lucky. Da Flamingo's face was ugly, and Jack was furious. When you met Lao Tzu, a sea thief with a reward of one billion, you actually said lucky. Isn't this a disguised way of saying that you are not a threat? You should feel bad luck and pour the kind of blood mold for eight lifetimes. Jack endured the pain of shattering jawbones and got up. Barbos smiled, bad luck. I don't think so. Just came to the new world, can slaughter the sea pirate with a reward of one billion bailey, or the three calamities from the hundred beast pirate group, and his luck is bursting. You will pay for your hubris. Jack was pissed off, this is the naked riding face output, naked disdain. His body grew rapidly and coarse hairs grew on the surface of his skin. Bang! Jack, a voice changer mammoth, smashed the earth, bent his limbs to charge his strength, and then rushed into the sky. The head was raised, and the cold shining ivory was like a sharp sword. Barbos was surprised, such a big body still jumped. However, Jack's body was bulky and his speed was limited, and Barbos's body floated slightly, so he dodged the fatal blow. Yikes! Barbos was about to fight back, when there was a dense sound of breaking air around him. Sixteen divine murder bullets, God kills. The number reached sixteen giant lines entwined with armed color domineering, striking from all directions. Brother Da Flamingo, who allowed you to make a move, Lao Tzu is going to tear this guy with his own hands. Jack yelled unpleasantly, angrily scolding Da Flamingo for being nosy. Da Flamingo secretly curses stupidity, sneak attack you can become a head giving, just kill others alone? Barbos did not panic in the slightest, and the surface of his body condensed a solid purple coat. Click. 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 Without Barbos' hands, any attack that flew in was dismembered by the force of destruction. Da Flamingo's heart fell to a trough, which was already his strongest trick. Your opponent is me. Looking at Barbos in the sky, Jack gathered his limbs and jumped up again. Barbos casually unleashed a ball of energy, filled with a strong destructive power. Look at Lao Tzu through your. Jack is simply synonymous with recklessness, ivory wrapped around armed color domineering stinging. Barbos smiled dumbly, there weren't many similar fools this year. He couldn't help but think of Danzo in the Hokage Kuno Susa. Right now, Jack has also staged a witty Operation Ivory Fury stabbing destructive power. Click. 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 At the moment of contact, the ivory disappeared in an instant, and the protection of the armed color was meaningless. Jack finally realized that something was wrong, and subconsciously tilted his body, wanting to avoid the power of destruction. However, by the time it was too late, the purple light had already covered the whole body. Barbos indifferently spat out two words, destruction. What, a? Jack let out a bitter scream, and his bloated body turned into purple particles and dispersed in the air. Da Flamingo is sluggish, and the sea thief with a billion bounty is gone? One billion reward, nine hundred million ivory, this ridicule is not unfounded. Barbos muttered softly and fell from the sky. Looking at the man in front of him, Da Flamingo's nerve reflexes retreated. You'd better calm down. Lao Tzu's identity is not as simple as you think, it's not just a Chiwohei. Seeing that he was not an opponent, Da Flamingo had to take out the threat Dafa and threatened, Lao Zi is a Draco. Move me, not only Kaido can't spare you, Draco is killed, the world government and navy can't spare you. This is your last words. Barbosa's face was calm, and his clear eyes did not wave. Da Flamingo finished secretly. From the expression on Barbosa's face, he deciphered three words don't care. What Draco, what Kaiwasi, including the four emperors behind it, Barbos didn't pay attention to it at all. What to do, what the hell to do? Da Flamingo's brain cells sped up, sweat already wetting his shirt. Until now, let alone revenge, saving one's life is a problem. Now, he just wants to end the war with dignity. Yes, there you have it. 
With a flash of light in his mind, Da Flamingo immediately thought of a countermeasure. Round my life, Lao Tzu tells you a big secret. Da Flamingo seemed to have caught the only straw, it's a secret that can turn the world upside down, as long as. I don't listen. Barbos covered his ears. Da Flamingo was stunned, shouldn't normal people be very interested in secrets, especially those that are enough to shake the world? After all, human curiosity is endless, especially those big guys, all covet the domination of the world, hearing this kind of secret, sharpening their heads and getting into it also want to hear. Da Flamingo tempted, that secret is enough to affect the existence of the world, once. I don't care. Barbos added. The corners of Da Flamingo's mouth twitched wildly, I don't listen I don't care? Are you fucking a child? In fact, Barbos also understood what Da Flamingo wanted to say, probably that Mary Jo a treasure. He really wasn't interested, Barbos just wanted to end the so-called era of sea thieves. Da Flamingo's face was gloomy, all the tricks were used, and there was only one way to do it run. Swish. He was as fast as lightning and disappeared in the blink of an eye. Barbos tapped the ground on his tiptoes, and the rich destructive power quickly dispersed. Da Flamingo swept towards the harbor, where the battleship was parked. He seemed to see the way to life, and the wind on the solace of his feet was blowing, and he hurried away. But the next kick slammed into the air, and Da Flamingo fell unexpectedly. Bang bang! Da Flamingo fell deep in the ground and looked up blankly. I don't know when it started, the earth has been hollowed out. Inside this crater, purple energy spreads. What did Barbos do? Da Flamingo's pupils contracted, and he couldn't help but gasp as he looked at this giant crater with a diameter of one kilometer. Create such a big pit in an instant? The danger factor in Barbos's heart skyrocketed. He thought it was ridiculous, this year, the bounty hunter is so awesome. Before Barbos could catch up, Da Flamingo quickly got up. Boom! Before the waist straightened, a terrifying coercion fell from the sky. This ominous fluctuation of power made Da Flamingo's whole body tremble. He knew that Barbos was coming. This, what the hell is this ability? He had never seen such a heaven-defying devil fruit that could quietly destroy everything. Cat-cat fruit, phantom beast species, god of destruction form. Barbos responded indifferently. Impossible, I've seen the devil fruit guide, I don't have this ability. Da Flamingo denied it. Barbos frowned, and did not explain anything else, it's time for you to hit the road. Da Flamingo. The words fell, and he swooped into Da Flamingo. A heavy kick struck, and Da Flamingo's chest made a crackling sound. Wow! Brown blood spurted out of his mouth and multiple ribs were broken. Barbo stepped on Da Flamingo, you like to abuse and kill people the most, and today you should try it yourself. Da Flamingo was furious when he heard this, you this bang. As soon as he stepped on it, the bones of the entire face were broken. Da Flamingo twisted his face and cried out whom H. Barbos continued to commit violence, stepping on Da Flamingo's knees and cheekbones on both sides, and finally penetrating the heart, causing the guy to die in pain. Cruel, of course. However, Da Flamingo killed too many people in a similar way, and everyone in the Don Quixote family had tyrannical blood flowing in their bones. The upper beam is not right and the lower beam is crooked, the old big head of the pirate group is not normal, where can others go normally? After getting Da Flamingo, Barbos went to trouble someone else. Way a a. Don't kill me, I just joined the Don Quixote family. I still have a wife and children. Please spare us. The screams were repeated, and the killing lasted for about an hour. All pirates were brutally purged and suppressed. Although Barbos killed the Red Eye, he did not lose his humanity, and some special existences were still let go. For example, Violet. She was originally the princess of Dress Rosa, the daughter of King Riku, and joined the Don Quixote family only to protect her father. Violet herself didn't do anything bad either. 
You, you guy, have already destroyed the family, why do you want to drive us to extinction? Diamante led a dozen kneeling and begging for mercy, crying loudly. Barbos is so terrible, many pirates want to take a boat to run, and sadly, the nearby sea is wiped out by the power of destruction. Barbos was unmoved, his eyes were still as cold as stagnant water. The arm is raised, and the fingertips concentrate the purple energy ball. Wohohohu! The biting cold wind hit behind, and the legs clicked and froze. Barbos swept back, and it was the Admiral Pheasant. Admiral Akainu. Is the Navy going to be nosy? Barbos was displeased to ask, he did not have any conflict with the Navy, and even to some extent, Barbos helped the Navy a lot. They have already surrendered, just throw them into the city, there is no need to kill them all. The Pheasant felt that Barbos had overdone it. Barbos took a deep look at the Green Pheasant, and four contemptuous words appeared at the corner of his mouth, the three views are not correct. The green pheasant's face suddenly sank, this guy mocked himself? Snap! The red dog on the side applauded passionately, and his old-fashioned face showed a rare smile. That's right, he has always thought that the three views of the green pheasant are not correct. As a navy, do what the navy should do, and it is the navy's duty to arrest pirates. In the name of the Navy, it is too funny to shout for the pirates. What's more, people like Diamante have accumulated countless sins and evils on their bodies, and ten death sentences are enough, and it is cheaper for him to be thrown into the city to retire. The green pheasant was already angry in his heart, and the bastard of the red dog still applauded, and his mentality suddenly exploded. Sakaski, I'm your colleague. Barbos. It's just a bounty hunter who killed the rear admiral. No, he is now a pirate. The pheasant stared at Barbos unkindly. You mean Virgo, that guy is not a rear admiral, but Da Flamingo's undercover agent who broke into the navy. Barbos speaks amazingly. The red dog and the green pheasant were both stunned, undercover? Is there any proof? Akainu asked quietly. There is no physical evidence. This person testifies. Barbos looked at Diamante, one of the few who knew Virgo's identity. Realizing that his chance to live had come, Diamante was pleasantly surprised. Confess, can you bypass my life? Barbos looked indifferent and did not say a word. Tell the truth, I can keep you from dying. But the green pheasant spoke, the general's promise still had gold content, Diamante hesitated and confessed. That's right, young lord. Oh no, Da Flamingo sent him into the navy many years ago, and Virgo's true identity is actually the top official of the family. Sabotage. As soon as the words fell, two cool words sounded in his ears. Wow. Save me. Diamante broke down little by little in his wail. Seeing this, the green pheasant was furious, what I said just now, didn't you hear? A large amount of cold air gushed out, and the surrounding ground froze. Only the purple light on Barbosa's body is pervasive, and the cold will be erased when it approaches. I'm not deaf, of course I heard it. Barbos spread his hands, but ah, uh, I am not a navy, why do I obey your orders? You. The corners of the pheasant's mouth twitched, and he was speechless. Yes, what the people Barbos said is also reasonable. He is not a navy, why obey the order of a naval admiral? Even if you are not a navy and kill the Kaiwasi, you are still a Kaiwasi with a complex identity, and the world government will not spare you, so you can do it yourself. The green pheasant turned away, suddenly feeling that his nemesis had one more one. Barbos looked at the dissipating back of the pheasant, seemingly smiling. You don't seem to panic at all. The red dog naturally saw Barbosa's calmness. There is nothing entangled in this kind of thing, let it be fate. Barbos shrugged, if the world government couldn't get by with him, Barbos wouldn't sit and wait to be abused. In fact, don't look at Da Flamingo is a seven-armed sea, or a Draco, but the top of the world government is not more than Flamingo, because he controls the big secret the great treasure of Mary Joa. In the original book, 
after Da Flamingo was defeated, the world government immediately sent killers to advance the city to assassinate Da Flamingo, in order to make the secret sink into the sea forever. In a way, Barbos helped the world government. Is there any interest in joining the navy? Chinu asked coldly. Barbos was surprised, the navy doesn't mind if I kill Da Flamingo. Akinu smiled slightly, there is naturally no problem in joining the navy, I think the marshal of the warring states and the high level of the world government will not refuse a future admiral because of a Da Flamingo. Barbos bowed his head in silence for a moment, and finally nodded in agreement. There are so many pirates on the sea, it is a bit ridiculous to end the era of pirates by himself, and he also needs teammates. In addition, Barbos can see that although the pheasant is quite critical of himself, the red dog is the one who is like-minded with him. He saw the hatred and disgust for pirates in the eyes of the red dog, there is no hatred for no reason in this world, the red dog probably had a painful experience in the past, and the two had a lot in common. Half an hour later, Barbos left Dress Rosa with the Navy. Before leaving, with the help of Barbos, the Lika royal family was successfully restored. On the Blue Sea, the waves rolled, and many warships crossed the thorns and headed towards the distance. The green pheasant glanced at the warship next to him, and Barbos and the red dog were drinking and chatting on the deck. These two guys, it's really Wang Bie who looks at the mung beans and looks at them. The green pheasant was secretly surprised, what kind of urine the red dog naturally understood, his personality was old-fashioned and serious, and he never drank alcohol when performing tasks. At the moment, he actually gave up the principle he had adhered to for many years for the sake of Barbos, which really surprised the pheasant. It seems that this guy's joining the navy is a foregone conclusion. The green pheasant's expression was a little complicated. For Barbos, he really didn't like it, this young man was too hot-tempered, and his temperament was even more bloodthirsty and cruel than that of the red dog. But it is also undeniable that the addition of Barbos will strengthen the naval strength. The headquarters of the navy is plentiful. It stands to reason that if a da flamingo dies, that guy is also a kibusi, and the balance of the world will be shaken by this, but the warring states did not worry about this, but smiled and closed their mouths. The red dog called, and Barbos agreed to join the navy. Can Sengoku not be happy? Killing Da Flamingo and Drought Jack is like playing, which is not a proper general level combat power. In contrast, Da Flamingo is naturally insignificant. On the side of the world government, they also received the news of Da Flamingo's tragic death without waves, and even when talking to the five old stars, the warring states obviously heard each other's joy. Half a day later, Akainu and Barbos finally arrived at the naval headquarters. By the port, the Admiral Sengoku personally greeted him. The old man's face turned into a chrysanthemum, and he shouted in a breathy voice, Young man, welcome to the Navy. Barbos did not expect the Warring Congress to personally greet him, and complimented at the moment, It's not a secret, when I was a bounty hunter in the North Sea, I wanted to join the Navy and now my dream has finally come true. Ha ha ha, young people have unlimited prospects. Sengoku patted Barbos's shoulder and looked at this immature but mature and stable cheek, Barbos, look at you like this, probably in your early twenties, right? Both the red dog and the pheasant cast curious looks, and Barbos was indeed young. It'll be twenty in two months. Barbos answered honestly, age has nothing to hide, right? The smile on Sengoku's face stiffened, it's only twenty months left. That is, now you, or nineteen. The warring states suddenly felt that the brain was not enough, are the young people now so against the sky? The afterlife is terrible. The red dog sighed with emotion. He hadn't joined the navy at his age, but Barbos was at the pinnacle of his life. The green pheasant is also embarrassed, at only nineteen years old. He is not weaker than the Admiral, and he is probably the best newcomer in the history of the Navy. No wonder Sengoku laughed so happily. The Navy conference room, where many bigwigs gathered. The three major generals appeared, 
as well as lieutenant generals such as Carp and Staff Crane. In addition, there are some ruthless characters that cannot be ignored, such as ghost spiders and lieutenant generals such as squirrels. Everyone's eyes were focused on Barbos, with different expressions. On the left side of the Sengoku are yellow apes and pheasants, on the right are red dogs, and beyond that is Barbos. The army is a highly hierarchical place, even the seats are exquisite, and everyone understands that this young man who has just joined the navy is about to ascend to heaven in one step. I declare that Barbos will be a vice admiral from now on. Warring states gaze swept over the audience, the five old stars also agreed to make Barbos a general backup. The vice admiral alone was surprising, and a general substitute appeared in the back, which really stunned all the navies present. Oh the old man climbed for decades to get mixed up with the general. The yellow ape grumbled with a slanted mouth. There are capable people who live there, Baru Salino, when you joined the navy, you reached the level of Barbos, and naturally you can also become a general backup. The red dog responded unsaltedly. Sakaski, we have been in a relationship for decades, how can we not be as good as a new person, you actually help him speak. The yellow ape pulled a face, Nimapo's surface brother. If you have Barbosa's self-motivation, the old man will naturally defend you. The red dog went to the new world in a business-like tone, and Barbos destroyed Da Flamingo and Drought Jack, a seven wahe, plus the core cotters of the four emperors, and this work efficiency was ten streets behind. Next, the warring states announced that Barbos would serve at the G20 base of the navy covering the entire four seas and part of the first half of the Great Route. The G20 base has nearly 5,000 or so navies. And the Sengoku also assigned Barbos a female major general named Dori. Don't look at a woman, that is also a presence that cannot be ignored, and two years later, Dole was also promoted to Vice Admiral and served as the base commander of the Navy's G14. Congratulations, Lieutenant General Barbos. Some people have already begun to congratulate Barbos. Among the many naval sub-bases, the G20 is also the strongest base, and many people are sour. However, considering Barbos's strength, people are worthy of the name. A day later, Barbos shocked the world by debuting as a substitute for the general. There was also a uproar all over the world, including those four emperors. Is it this guy who killed Jack and the Joker? and Caesar's unlucky bastard, humph, what about the general's replacement, don't think that he became a navy, the old lady will let you go, you stinky little devil. On the cake island of the New World, Aunt tore up the newspaper in anger. She paid billions of Bailey to Caesar to study the gigantic drugs, and as a result, the person died, and the money could not be recovered. This account can only be counted on Barbosa's head. Find a way for the old lady to contact that stinky imp named Barbos. The next day, a warship left Marin and headed for the distant ocean. The destination is precisely the G20 base of the Navy. On the deck, Barbos was comfortably blowing the sea breeze, and his neat broken hair was slightly messy under the stirring of the wind and waves. The white coat on the back also followed the hunting, and the word justice on the cloak was particularly eye catching. Cluck, Change into the uniform of the Navy, Vice Admiral Babos is more spirited. Pleasant and light laughter, ringing in the ears. The light from the corner of Barbos's eyes swept away, and his beautiful face came into view. The short-haired royal sister wears a fashionable black jacket, jeans and boots on the lower body, and a necklace full of conical spines. Barbos looked at Dory with interest, this dress was too unusual in the Navy. It's kind of that smell. Barbos rubbed his chin. What smell, do you mean my dress? Dole laughed happily and circled in front of Barbos, how, isn't it very fashionable? It's really fashionable, if you make an explosive head, it's the pirate version of the non-mainstream. Barbos Swan chuckled. Non-mainstream. Dole tilted his head, do you want to try it another day? Wait and see. Barbos returned to the cabin to rest with a leisurely face. Dor is an assistant equipped by the Sengoku and is responsible for helping Barbos with some trivial matters. 
In the evening, Barbos and his party finally arrived at the naval G20 base. This is a giant island built into a steel fortress, and the shore is full of defensive walls made of concrete, and nearly a hundred gaps have been hollowed out inside the wall, and cannons are placed in the same color. If any group of pirates who do not open their eyes attacks the G20 base, they will definitely pay a heavy price. The new governor arrived, and a grand welcome ceremony was held at the G20 base. To be honest, Barbos didn't like this kind of lively occasion, and in his previous life, he even had some social fear, and the feeling of being stared at by thousands of people would always be a little strange. However, after all, it was the kindness of his subordinates, and Barbos simply attended and left. Lieutenant General Barbos is too cold. Behind her Dory muttered flaming red lips, she was full of wine and her eyes were silky. Barbos, who was walking in front, did not say a word and left directly. Boss. Dor suddenly accelerated and sneaked in front of Barbos, his pretty face flashed into a bad smile, so many beautiful ladies greeted you just now, why did you run away, ah yes, I heard that you are only 19 years old, giggle. Dorban is good looking, coupled with drunkenness, more charming, her coquettish smile with a fatal temptation. Barbos's eyes were calm, if you have a fart, let it go, don't delay my rest. A -a 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 -a. Dole pouted and looked at the serious Barbos with another bad smile. She leaned into Barbos's ear and blew a hot breath, you. You don't even have a girlfriend, right? The corner of Barbos's mouth twitched, and he slapped Dor's face, go cool on the side. Bang. Dole was like a painting embedded in the wall, and the woman was not angry, but laughed unbridled. What an interesting boss. In the early morning, the distant sky gradually turned white. As soon as dawn broke, Barbos took the navy out to sea to sweep up. The jurisdiction of the G20 base covers all over the world, as well as part of the first half of the Great Route, and there are calls for help all day long. The real big guys are in the New World, the Four Seas and the first half of the Great Voyage, and most of them are some small shrimp that are not in the flow. It was too easy for the little minions to clean up, and even some pirates heard that Barbos was coming, and ran away as soon as possible. Such a boring life lasted for about a week. On an island called Griffin, Barbos, who had just finished cleaning up the pirates, went to the restaurant to eat. Soon the navy came running with a phone bug, and Barbos thought it was a distress message from somewhere else. Yo, how do you kid plan to compensate the old lady? Stinky little ghost. A rough voice rang out from inside the phone worm. A bloated and fat cheek automatically appeared in Barbos's mind, Big Mom? Just recognize the old lady, you don't need me to report to the family, you kid killed Caesar, and the guy took billions of funds from the old lady and also lost. The ant chattered endlessly, the old lady is a pirate, but she is not a philanthropist, you always have to give the old lady an explanation young navy. In three days, I will go to Zishuan Island to sweep up the pirates. Barbos said something inexplicable, and Auntie was confused when he heard it. What nonsense does this kid say, the old lady wants to ask you how to solve it, not your itinerary. The location has already told you, Caesar is also dead, compensation is even more impossible, how can the great four emperors lose money, big mom? You absolutely can't swallow this breath, so I'm bothered that you will come to Zishuan Island immediately to cut me, to be honest. I'm a little tired of boring life these days. Ha! Huh. Barbos said and hung up the phone worm. The ant who is far away on Cake Island looks sluggish, are the young people now so reckless that they let themselves cut him without saying a word? The gigantication of human beings has always been Auntie's dream. When she was young, and spent some time in Elbaf, the land of giants. It was also during that time that Ant witnessed the great power of giants and was fascinated by it. If the Big Mom pirates all have the power of giants, the unification of the world is just around the corner. Unfortunately, with the death of Caesar, the dream was completely shattered. Auntie's plan is simple, Barbos is still young, 
a little intimidation, see if this kid can resist the pressure, maybe he can force him to turn Vegapunk over. However, it turns out that Anti is purely personal. Instead of scaring Barbos, he was humiliated. The itinerary tells you, or you will be a bag. This fucking stinky brat. Boom. Anti was incompetent and furious, and the majestic overlord color tore the sky. Wait for me, the old lady will make you regret it. Anti's eyes spread with cobweb-like bloodshots. Barbos, to deal with a small character like you, the old lady can just make a phone call, well. Despite her anger, Auntie sensibly dialed a certain phone worm. It is impossible for her to do it herself, firstly, the ant thinks that Barbos is not worthy, and secondly, the four emperors act, the admiral will definitely not sit idly by, and someone will definitely intercept it. Kaji, it's the old lady. Vince Mock has always dreamed of restoring the glory of his ancestors the unification of the North Sea. However, his strength is limited, and many efforts have not been realized. When one's ability cannot satisfy ambition, most people will choose to go crooked. Gaiji is one of them. Time flies, and days pass in the blink of an eye. The trip to Nishikawa Island ended, and Barbos was greatly disappointed. Auntie did not show up, and even the big mom pirates did not come. Brew brew brew. The phone bug in his arms rang, Barbos pressed the answer button, and a familiar voice suddenly came from the other side. Humph, it's gone for a while, it's all mixed into a naval admiral to make up. If I don't contact you, will you forget about me? A female voice with nine points of resentment struck. Barbos's pupils fluctuated, Miss Leiju. That's right, the caller was none other than Leiju of the Vince Mock family. Barbos was previously the most famous bounty hunter in the North Sea, and the Vince Mock family was the overlord of the North Sea, and the two sides naturally intersected. Even the head of the Vince Mock family, Vince Mock Gagey, once took a fancy to Barbos's powerful combat power and recruited him. In order to get Barbos to join Vince Mock, Gagey even offered a bargaining chip to marry his daughter. However, Barbos refused, first of all, Gagey's request was to join the gang, and secondly, Gagey's use was too strong, he was a refined egoist, and the two sides eventually broke up. Hey, hey, hey! What's going on with this cold tone, as if I offended you? Barbos, we were born and died for a while. Leiju was lying on the bedroom, pouting her small mouth, it's only been more than a month, have I forgotten my sister, I'm so sad. Helplessness flashed in Barbos's eyes, how dare I, it's just that some of my father's words and deeds and actions bother me. Father's matter, I'm sorry, his solipsistic personality, I can't stand it at some times. Leiju sighed, and then a cheerful smile appeared on her pretty face, but now it's different, you are already a senior admiral backup, known as the best naval rookie, my father has to reconsider his relationship with you. Don't let me get into the details, say anything. Barbos smiled slightly, and Gagey was a little careful, he knew very well. It is nothing more than wanting to use his power to unify the North Sea. What kind of attitude do you have, being my sister's husband seems to have wronged you a lot. Leiju couldn't help but ask more, you are right to my sister. Isn't that a bit of a nonsense? I don't believe it's not a loss. When she asked this sentence, Lei Jukiao's face was already glowing red. To a young man under 20 years old, oh no. This is still a teenager, and it's too shameful to ask such a question. It's not a matter of thinking. Barbos mused, it seems to have been. In the past, Barbos was still a rookie and unfortunately suffered from poison, and it was Leiju who extracted the venom through a kiss. Barbos remembered at the time that it seemed to be the position of the thigh, and in order to facilitate Leiju to suck out the venom, the fat times were all off at that time. Ha ha ha, I know. Leiju rolled around on the bed. To be honest, she was rejected by Barbos before to marry, and Leiju was really a little hurt. The two have known each other for two or three years, born and died several times, 
during which they forged a deep relationship, and Barbos also took root in Leju's heart. You come to Jerma, my father also realized his previous mistake, and he hopes that I will compensate you on his behalf. Leju told the truth. Barbos frowned slightly, feeling quite abrupt, in his eyes, Gaiji had never been a good thing, and it was harder for him to apologize than to kill him. But since it was Leju's invitation, it was another matter. In two days, I'll rush over. The Vinsmok family, although they have no fixed territory, are also members of the world government, and also enjoy the right to cross the Red Earth continent, and are one of the few countries that can participate in the World Conference. It can be seen from this that even if he does not cooperate with the Big Mom pirates, Vince Mock can live moisturized by relying on his own conditions. However, Kaji has always dreamed of fulfilling his ancestors' wishes, but his own ability is limited, and in the end he still messes up. In the original work, Vince Mock was not only removed from the world government, but all members were also wanted by the Navy, and also provoked the Big Mom pirate group. Everything is because of Gagey's brainless operation. Two days later, on a stormy night, a giant warship swayed on the sea, and the flag of Germa fluttered in the wind. In the nearby seas, naval warships are also docked. The huge warship composed of multiple warships is the temporary territory of Vince Mock. If you don't come, I'll go to the G20 base to find you. In Leju's bedroom, she lazily lay on the table, looking at Barbos who was close at hand, her fair face showing a trace of nostalgia. In the Vince Mock family, there is only ruthlessness and oppression. After going out for a while, that was the time when she got to know Barbos, and after nearly three years of getting along, she knew that this was a guy who was cold on the outside and hot on the inside. Don't look, I don't seem to have anything on my face. Barbos schemed his eyes unnaturally. Hee <laughs> hee, I haven't seen it for a long time, I just want to see it. Leju's eyes turned into a crescent, drink some juice. Without waiting for Barbos to agree, Leju ordered someone to take it. She knew that Barbos rarely drank alcohol and always muttered that drunkenness was prone to flaws. That old stubborn, why did he suddenly want to open? Barbos took the initiative to change the topic, and the old stubborn in his mouth was naturally gagey. An arrogant, hypocritical, and self-righteous man. Hug your thighs. Leju took the juice sent by the next person, pushed one of the cups in front of Barbos, and mocked, the old man has always thought about unifying the North Sea, and everything that can be used is thinking about the use of the law. Barbos grunted and drank the juice, if you want to wear the crown, you must bear its weight, the government will not allow you to unify the North Sea, you better persuade Gagey to give up. Leju moved her mouth, and stopped talking. I thought that now Barbos is already a red man in the Navy, in fact, with his help, Vince Mock's unification of the North Sea is not a problem at all. However, Leju really didn't want to speak, she didn't want the relationship between the two to change because of family interests. Bang! Suddenly, the bedroom door was kicked away, and Kaji appeared with several sons. This rude and ruthless look made Barbo sneer secretly. Father, what are you doing? Leju asked angrily, you said that I have full authority to handle this matter. Useless guy. Kaji just glanced at Leju coldly, and scolded angrily, indecisive, going around and around, I can't even say those few words, it's really not like my daughter. Leju's face was livid, and she didn't know why Gaiji had changed her mind, especially embarrassing herself in front of Barbos. Before Barbos came, Gaiji promised that he would not participate and let Leju play freely. Barbos. Gaiji looked down at Barbos condescendingly, and his broad body was full of oppression, you are a reserve admiral, the four seas are your jurisdiction, as long as you are willing to help Vince Mock, we will unify the North Sea without pressure. Why should I help you? Barbos asked lightly, is this the attitude of asking for people to do things, Gagey, look at the difference between you and those robbers and bandits. Vince Mock is a family that pays attention to force, I never care about the evaluation of others, 
this world is always strength first. Gaiji also did not pretend, I will ask you, would you like to help Vince Mock unify the North Sea, if you want, I will give you everything, if you are not willing. What happens if you don't want to? Barbos asked expressionlessly. How? A scary smile appeared on Gaiji's face, I'm afraid you won't be able to leave Vince Mock alive. Leiju on the side was taken aback, Father, are you crazy, Barbos is now a general backup, moved him. The world government and navy will not spare the family. Gaiji was too lazy to take Leiju, and with a wave of his big hand, the three sons surrounded Barbos. Barbos was also quite surprised, why did Gaiji suddenly get fat and dare to compete with him? Did you find a backer? Barbos squinted, and soon thought of a certain big man force in the new world, Big Mom Pirate Group. Kaji's expression froze, this kid was as sharp as ever. It seems to be. Barbos stood up slowly, and the aura of destruction gushed out. There is no way to collude with the Big Mom Pirate Group, I can only throw you into the sea to feed the fish. Gaiji didn't panic at all, and laughed loudly, you may have been able to do it before, but as for now, ha ha ha. Haven't you found it yet? Barbos frowned, and the old dog smiled treacherously. Poof! Leiju on the side was the first to fall to the ground, lying weakly on the ground. Hard, do you say? Leiju felt cold in her heart, and looked at Gaiji in horror and disbelief. Ha ha ha! Seeing this, Kaji's smile was even greater. Leiju! Barbos asked suspiciously, it doesn't matter to you, how? A violent feeling of dizziness hit, and the world that Barbos saw with both eyes appeared ghosted. Poof! Barbos also fell beside Leiju. This thing is so much easier than I thought, I didn't expect you to be so stupid, oh no! It should be said that Leiju's status in your heart is too high, and you are actually defenseless. Gaiji looked at the two who fell to the ground proudly, the juice you drank, I sent someone to ingest neurotoxins in advance, I didn't expect it, Barbos. So it is, no wonder it is so arrogant in front of me. Barbos shook his head and teased, I used to be like a grandson, but now I suddenly feel like a grandson, Gaiji. You vile and shameless old fellow, you don't even let your own daughter go. Leiju was overwhelmed with grief, and tears couldn't help but fall. Gaiji first glared at Barbos, and then looked at Leiju and snorted coldly, what do you have to cry about, with your physique, you will recover without antidote, and the impact is only temporary. Gaiji didn't feel wrong in the slightest, and only by letting Reiju drink the poisonous juice with him would Barbos be more easily fooled. Leiju was desperate in her heart and looked at Barbos with guilt. You idiot! She caressed Barbos's cheek and said weakly, What did you do in the past to be vigilant, why did you fall down this time, Barbos, Barbos, you are really an idiot. This can't be helped, I'm also human, people have feelings. Barbos looked straight at Leiju, and his dry lips just spit out six words, Who made me believe you? Leiju's heart trembled fiercely, and tears gushed out again, Believe I have a fart, don't you still be fooled, you stupid idiot. Although she was still crying, Leiju's whole face was full of smiles. If someone else gives juice, Barbos will naturally be wary. But Leiju is different, and the two have had the experience of birth and death. If it weren't for Leiju in the past, Barbos would have hung up long ago. Today is also for the sake of Leiju's face, he will go to Vince Mock. Don't be so careless next time, no matter who it is, even me. Leiju gently hugged Barbos's lips and kissed it without hesitation. Kaji didn't hesitate to go up and kick it. Bang! Leiju was kicked out alive, like a painting, hanging on the wall. Traitor, still want to suck Barbos's venom out. A cold cold light flowed in Kaji's eyes. You're a pathetic and pathetic fellow. Barbos slowly got up, his pupils glowing with purple evil light. He was angry, and he was not so angry in the face of Doflamingo, the enemy who killed his father and mother. The power of violent destruction spreads. Quickly retreat.
Gaiji, who realized that something was wrong, exclaimed and dodged out at the first time. He slipped away quickly, but the three sons next to him poured blood mold. In the blink of an eye, it was destroyed, turning into a large number of particles and scattering in the air. How, how is it possible, you obviously drank my neurotoxin, your body should be weak and weak, why do you still have this exaggerated combat power? Gaiji's heart was extremely shocked, and he looked at his three disappeared sons and was heartbroken, you bastard, you have ruined the future of the Vince Mock family. You are the one who ruined Vince Mock. Barbos did not rush to execute Gaiji, and went to put Riju down first. His gaze was rare with a hint of tenderness, how does it feel? It's okay. Leiju shook her head, she can be immune to many toxins, but why can Barbos not be affected? Leiju, I believe in you very much. Barbos repeated. I understand. Leiju nodded heavily. If you understand, I'm going to kill him next. Barbos pointed to Gaiji. Leiju smiled bitterly when she heard this. I believe I still killed my father. These are two different things, I believe in you, but this does not affect my desire to kill your father in the slightest." Barbos spoke loudly and unquestionably. Leiju was silent, and she was also disappointed in Gaiji. It's just that her three younger brothers have been erased by the angry Barbos, and even the one that has no body left, if Kaji also dies, she will be alone. Swish. Barbos swept in front of Gaiji in an instant, grabbed his right arm roughly, and rotated 720 degrees. Click. In an instant, the bones were brutally twisted. Barbos jerked back, and the arm was dragged off along with the shoulder. Whoa a a a a a a Kaji let out a bitter scream, what are you still looking at there, and you still don't do it. Barbos frowned, there was someone else. Be careful! Leiju cried out in fright, and a black shadow pounced on Barbos's back with lightning speed. The raised giant blade carried an armed color domineering, and it pierced Barbos as soon as he saw it. Sabotage! Click! The giant blade collapsed on its own, shattering into nothingness. Barbos turned around, his pupils reflecting the tall cookie man. It's you, Charlotte Crifraim! Finally a heavyweight role. The comer, one of the dessert stars belonging to the Big Mom Pirates, has a bounty of 860 million baileys. Clay is a biscuit fruit ability, because of fear of pain, he hides among cookie people all year round. Die. Weapons were destroyed, and Kriji smashed with a fist. Bang bang. The bursting fist wind dispersed around, and Barbos crossed his arms and resisted the blow. The unwilling Klee frame planned to attack again, but Leiju took the opportunity to attack and volleyed. Bang! Impartially, right in the head, the giant cookie man flew out. Seeing this, Gaiji almost vomited blood, Leiju, are you an idiot, Barbos killed your three younger brothers and twisted my arms off, you actually helped him. Tell me, whose daughter are you? You still know I'm your daughter? I thought you forgot. Leiju seemed to have recovered, her expression was as usual, but her beautiful eyes were as quiet as a pool of stagnant water. She was disappointed in her heart, knowing that this father was sinister and cunning, and would stop at nothing to achieve his ends, but she did not expect such a madness. In order to poison Barbos, he did not hesitate to poison her with him. Traitor, you shameful traitor! Kaji gritted his teeth and said hatefully, I knew that now, I should have killed you directly in the first place. Since you said so, I don't have to be polite. Leiju's calves swept through the air again. Bang bang! The mask on Kaji's face shattered, and the whole person flew out. He fell to the ground and convulsed for a few seconds, then lost consciousness. After cleaning up Gaiji, Rejoy pounced on Barbos and lay on her arm and gulped in venom. Barbos couldn't help but be stunned, even though he knew that Leiju was worried that he would die of poison, there was still a strange emotion in his heart. Bastard! After Kriji got up, he watched the two angry heads smoke. Mom, 
did you put Lao Tzu in your eyes? The great enemy is now, and you are here to show affection. You guys! Damn! The always silent Kelly Rack erupted, and he hid inside the cookie man, clapping his hands wildly. Rumble! 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 Giant cookie men fell from the sky, and the battleships were smashed and shook. Under the control of the Kruji, the cookie man was in unison, striding forward like a phalanx. On Leju and Barboza's side, the two finally separated. Remembering Fang Cai's initiative, Leiju always felt like he had changed someone, and quickly changed the topic awkwardly, how does it feel, has the toxin been cleaned up? Barbos looked strange, opened his mouth and was silent again. It's better to tell Leiju later. I'm good, in spirit like never before. Barbos slowly got up and looked at the cookie men coming in a group with a calm expression. Destroy this trash fish. I still have a lot to say to you. After the fierce kiss just now, Leiju completely let go of the shelf, and the little fragrant tongue slid up and down Barbosa's earlobe. Since Barbos didn't come to attack her, she went to attack Barbos. If you delay any longer, this little virgin's one blood may be taken away by others. You dare to say I'm a trash fish? Although Leiju's voice was not loud, Clay Rack still heard it clearly. At the moment, he was angry and wanted to die, and roared, first tear this woman to pieces for me. More than thirty cookie men wielded their swords together. Buzz. However, before he could make a move, purple light fell from the sky and wrapped many cookie people. Don't look at just the cookie man, the actual hardness is terrible, the straw hat luffy in the original work, it is difficult to break when opening the fourth gear. Not to mention that the clay rack manufactured more than 30 at one time. Sabotage. Two simple words spat out of the corners of Barbosa's mouth. Click. In an instant, hordes of cookie people began to disintegrate on their own. It turned into a purple light and scattered. Kelly couldn't help but be stunned, this is gone. Swish. Barbos swooped in, and his fist the size of a sandbag slammed into it. Rumble. Click. With a loud bang, the cookie man wrapped in the clay rack shattered. His essence was also revealed a strong man with a height of three meters. Annoyed, Klee raised his knife and fell, and the huge slash was killed with a sonic boom. Barbos spread out his palm, purple light in his palm, and grabbed it with one hand. Hands don't want it, do they, idiot? Kree yelled. Barbos was too lazy to deal with him, and the moment he was about to be struck, his big hand suddenly clenched. Crunch! The giant slash was caught by him empty-handed, and with a sound of destruction, he disappeared without a trace. If you're just that, you're going to die ugly. Babos pressed towards the Cree frame step by step. Don't look down on people too much, you bastard. The furred Christand clapped his hands wildly and hundreds of cookies quickly appeared around him, and under his exquisite control, the cookies swelled into a burly cookie man. If you get thirty, you can get three hundred. Clay gasped, tired and covered in sweat. Barbos looked at the cryptic frame like a fool, the quantity is not enough to make up for the qualitative gap, in the final analysis, you are still too weak. Let's get carried away there, stinky little devil. The clay rack thundered. At the Big Mom Pirates, he has always liked to act alone. Why be a lone ranger? To put it bluntly, I just feel that I am strong and there is no need to team up with others. At the moment, the proud strength was trampled, and clay rack shouted with a grin, wait to be cut to pieces. Barbosa's palm spread out, and purple light gushed. That weird energy again? But this time Lao Tzu has already prepared. Clay grinned, and as many as three hundred cookie men raised their shields at the same time, and also wrapped their armed color domineering. Poof! Clay was tired and fell on the spot. The cookie maker originally consumes physical strength, plus apportioning his domineering energy to each cookie man, his physical strength and domineering are almost exhausted. However, even if he was tired and half dead, 
Klee's face was full of pride, even if it's my mother's kind of four emperor level combat power, it's impossible to take mine huh? The purple energy condensed in his hand catapulted away, and immediately spread out in the air. Sabotage. Two more bland words fell. Click. 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 Under the incredulous gaze of the Cree frame, the numerous cookie men were annihilated at once. This, this. Is this really fake? Clay rubbed his eyes, thinking for a moment that he was hallucinating. It was at this moment of distraction, and Barboza's fist slammed head on. Bang bang click. There was a sound of cracking bones in the chest, and the entire chest collapsed into the body. Way a a. Kelly screamed and flew out, spurting blood wildly from his mouth. He was in pain worse than death, squirming like a worm. Barbo strolled over, his emotionless cheeks, as if he had done a trivial thing. Da Flamingo was slaughtered by him, Drought Jack was also slaughtered, and it didn't feel much to kill another Criframe. Criframe's pupils contracted violently, and he was greeted as if he was a grim reaper carrying a scythe. I won't die in this place where birds don't. Kriji struggled to get up, gathering enough strength to kill. Fluctuation Pretzels The double-edged sword in his hand, the pretzel, blasted out a large shock wave like a cannon. Bang bang! The ferocious impact exploded on his body, and Barbos took two steps back. Kriji's face is ugly, like a dead father, and he repelled this bastard two steps with one blow. His eyes widened unwillingly and swept around Barbos. Don't look, you can't find the wound if you look again. Barbos scoffed, injured by goods like you, how can I go to the new world in the future? The corners of the clay rack's mouth twitched wildly, I am such a color? Is Lao Tzu fucking bad? The giant sword in his hand stabbed forward, and the clay rack burst out, roll pretzels. The spiral sword chi that was wrapped around the color of the armed color hit the face, like a tornado, and the dust was swept in. Barbosa's heart is in his heart, and going around is this level. Case. Let's hit the road. Boom. The sword chi succeeded in Barbos, and the clay frame almost jumped up in surprise, once the enemy was devoured by this move, it was rolled into minced meat in minutes. However. Bang. As if an endless purple shockwave burst out, the sword wind wrapped around his body blew away in the blink of an eye. The furious coercion swept through the audience, and the hull was cracked by the shock. Kree's face showed a thick pain, overlord colored domineering? No, even my mother's overlord color is not so powerful. The bones of the whole body burst, and the bones in the whole body seemed to crack at any time. Auntie's overlord color domineering, Klee Frame has naturally seen it, and it is not as exaggerated as this terrifying force. The Kree Frame seems to have encountered a natural enemy, and it is difficult for the body to move. Barbos came straight in front of him, his thumb aimed at Kree's head, and the purple light of the evil gate shone again. Grunt. Kriji choked in his throat and said in horror, You want to kill me? I'm dead, and mom and brother Katakuri won't spare you. If you don't die, they won't spare me. Barbos lightly clicked, and the purple energy ball submerged into the body of the acrylic frame. Sabotage. Way a a a. The clay frame disappeared in the scream. There really is yours, the dessert star of the Big Mom Pirate Group, kill if you say kill. Leiju said solemnly, in the future, Ant will kill you. Hey! Barbo smiled disapprovingly, the Navy and pirates are originally opposing enemies, I don't care anyway. With the tragic death of Kriji, this brief riot officially came to an end. Don't look at it in less than an hour, but the big events that happen are thrilling enough to make the world boil. The Vinsmock family, almost annihilated. Charlotte Clay, the dessert general star from the Big Mom Pirates, died tragically. Whichever thing gets out, the world will be shaken. After the riot was over, Reiju did not execute the crippled Kaji, and ordered the clones to take him down for treatment. The warship of the Vinsmock family also sailed away from this stormy and oppressive sea. 
In other seas, the bright sun shines down, and the warm sun is very comfortable on the body. Barbos held a couch and lay in the sun like a cat. I don't know how long it took, the pink high heels collided with the deck, and there was a click sound. Barbos opened his eyes, it's Leiju. Sorry, did I make a noise about you? A slightly tired pretty face appeared in the pupils, and Barbos touched it quite complicatedly, it's rare to see you so sentimental, is it because of the death of your brothers and your father's affairs? Although it is not a pity that Geiji and his gang died, they were Leiju's relatives anyway. Leiju sighed, sorry, even if that guy abandoned me, I can't kill him ruthlessly, isn't it very useless? What do you think, it's human nature? Barbos unexpectedly denied, you can't get off the hand, because that's the father who gave birth to you and raised you, you still have feelings for him, and there are bonds, and no individual can really give up feelings. If you really kill the killer, what's the difference between you and your brothers who give up their emotions? Leiju suddenly became cheerful, and immediately asked nervously, what did that father do to you? Can you forgive him? Barbos thought for a moment and said, For your sake, I cannot blame you in the past, not to mention that guy's arm was twisted off by me, which can be regarded as punishment. But the head of the Vince Mock family, Geiji can't sit down, imprison him, and you will be the leader of the Vince Mock family in the future, Leiju. Leiju rubbed her face into Barbos's arms, It's good to have you, if you need my sister's help in the future, just say it. No matter what it is, my sister can promise you, in every way. Leiju Jiao's dripping red lips opened and blew hot breath on Barbosa's face again. If you continue like this, I feel that sooner or later something will go wrong, and everyone's patience has a limit. Barbos rolled his eyes angrily, this woman was still in a grey second ago, mourning was greater than the look of death, and she could drive in a blink of an eye. Ha ha ha, then don't bear it, people you should release it to your heart's content, it will be suffocated for a long time. Leiju didn't pretend any more, and her delicate body was so soft that she was in Barbosa's arms. The little virgin suddenly froze, and his body was tense like a steel plate. Two lifetimes as human beings, Barbos has not had such contact with women. In my mind, I suddenly remembered Doyle's mockery a few days ago you won't have a girlfriend yet, right? Barbos was heartbroken and directly held Leiju in his arms. Finally how do you know the initiative, I thought you were wood. Leiju grabbed Barbos's chin and kissed him. Barbos also responded rather awkwardly. Don't look at the many soldiers walking around on the ship, they are actually clones, so don't worry. The battleship rode the wind and waves on the sea and headed straight into the distance. Near a deserted island, the warships of the Vince Mock family are docked in shallow water. Barbos and Leiju are like a couple in love, lying hand in hand on the golden sand. Leiju, I didn't tell you something before. Barbos said softly, Actually, your father's poison has not affected me, and my destructive power can destroy everything, including any toxin. I know. Leiju's answer made Barbos look sideways, looking at your lifelike appearance. I know that you are healthier than me. Then why are you still giving me drugs? Barbos tilted his head, rather puzzled. Because. Leiju chuckled charmingly, and suddenly rolled over and rode on Barbos's body, wasn't it a good opportunity to take advantage at that time? It's still the kind that is justified. Barbos opened his mouth and couldn't help but slap Leiju's buttocks, play routines with me, don't take an example. Leiju rubbed aggrievedly, people know, next time. Just come straight to it. Barbos cried and laughed, didn't he say that girls in love are often mentally retarded, Leiju's IQ has not been weakened, but eccentric, and her belly has become darker. Then again, there's a question that has been bothering me for a long time. Leiju looked directly into Barbos's clear eyes, why did you suddenly join the Navy? It is not easy to work for the Draco even if they are mixed into generals, they have no dignity. I have never been loyal to Draco. Barbos explained slowly, it's not a secret, I joined the navy because I saw that guy Sakaski. 
the Dress Rosa incident a few days ago, even if the Navy at that time attacked him, with Barbosa's strength, he could still leave unharmed. It was from the Red Dog that he saw some commonality that Barbos joined the Navy with the mentality of trying. Red Dog Leiju obviously wanted to be crooked, and complained resentfully, Honey, you won't eat both men and women, it's such a heavy taste, just forget about the young handsome guy, the other party is a bad old man. Leiju looked disgusted after speaking. Barbos found the green tendon in his brain and almost didn't hold back to release the destructive power. This woman's brain circuitry is really fucking weird. I am like-minded with him, we are all full of hatred for pirates in our bones, that guy is like me, thinking of ending the era of pirates, my own power is limited, and I also need help. Barbos told the truth, as for Draco. After eliminating the pirates, it is the second target to be eliminated. One day later. Barbos did not hide what he did, and he could not hide it anyway. In just one day, the news of the heavy losses of the Vinsmok family and the tragic death of the change of owner and Krigia swept the world with the momentum of the wind. Barbos is once again making headlines around the world. After destroying the three plagues of the Hundred Beast Pirates, this time he killed the Desert Star of the Big Mom Pirates, and Barbosa's wave of popularity was directly filled and became the most topical figure around the world. To say that the bloodiest loss is the Big Mom pirate group, the ant is bent on killing Barbos, of course, she also knows that Barbos is not simple, so contact Vince Mock to cooperate, coupled with the secret assistance of Clay, presumably it should be simple to take Barbos, right? Reality gave Ant a slap in the face, and Vince Mock and Christand were simply taken down. First Caesar's beam, and now because of the deepening of the contradiction of the Kriji, the ant stormed away and personally led the team to attack naval bases around the world, and many islands were destroyed. For a time, the cloud of war hung over the navy and the Big Mom pirates. Something so big happened, and Barbos was also recalled to the headquarters of the navy. The Marshal of the Warring States also held an emergency meeting, attended by all the top officials of the Navy. Guys. You all understand things, you don't need me to explain more, what do you think? The Warring States swept through the scene, and the reason was that Barbos had already said very clearly, that is, Auntie's plan failed, and then he couldn't afford to play himself, and looked for people everywhere to vent his hatred, resulting in heavy losses for the Navy. It's not just the Big Mom Pirate Group, but also the Hundred Beast Pirate Group. The dozing green pheasant opened his eyes, thanks to the right-hand man Barbos, the peaceful world is finally chaotic. Barbos frowned, because targeting pirates was more extreme, plus he belonged to the Red Dog's faction, and the relationship with the pheasant was naturally very poor. Cusin, there is something to say bluntly, why bother in this yin and yang strangeness? You are not a eunuch. Barbos didn't hesitate to go back. Poof. The serious red dog on the side couldn't hold back, and the black face smiled into a flower. What did you kids say? The green pheasant's eyes were cold, and he said hoarsely, Don't forget, I am also your boss, give me attention to your attitude, stinky little ghost. The green pheasant felt that his temper was getting worse and worse and he used to be able to touch fish in Buddhism, but now he is almost out of control. Can he be blamed for this, though? This little fart child, who is less than twenty years old, actually called his name in front of everyone, and even Mr. did not know to add, no big or small, no respect. What made the pheasant's nest most angry was that Barbos taunted him as a eunuch. The lieutenant general mocked the general as a eunuch, is there still heavenly reason? Enough, I want to hear about the solution, I don't want to hear you argue. Sengoku slapped the table angrily while glaring at Barbos in dissatisfaction. I do have a working solution. The green pheasant slowly got up, cleared his throat, and was about to speak, when someone began to act as a demon again. Ahem, wait a minute. The red dog took out a cigar from his arms and lit it on fire, the old man smokes a cigarette. The green pheasant's face was expressionless, but his breathing suddenly became a little heavier. 
he knew that the red dog was deliberately disgusting him. The green pheasant took a deep breath, took a few breaths of cool air and continued, actually, as long as. Excuse me. This time it was Barbosa's turn to perform, with his legs on the table, his back tilted, and he lay comfortably on the backrest, the body is a little uncomfortable, I change my sitting position. The rest of the navy was stunned and collectively dumbfounded. Is this the world of the big guys? One smokes. One change sitting position. Fools can see that this is clearly teasing the pheasant. When the warring states spoke just now, Akainu and Barbos were not such an attitude, anyone could see it, this was naked contempt. Click. The crisp sound of objects freezing sounded, and the chair under the pheasant's butt turned into an ice sculpture. Barbos seemed to be smiling and didn't care at all. He looked around thoughtfully, the faces of Karp and Lieutenant General Tsuru were not very good looking, and Sengoku also shrugged a face. Speaking of which, the old guys all supported the pheasant, and all three also supported the pheasant as a marshal of the navy. Instead, the yellow ape swept around, and from time to time he would show a lewd smile, looking like he was watching a good show. The navy is also currently systematic. Red Dog and Barbos are one faction. The four staff officers of King He, Sengoku, Karp, and Crane are another camp. Yellow apes are in their own right. Me off. Are you trying to plunge the navy into a civil war? Bang bang. Wood chips burst open, and Sengoku slapped the table in front of him. Angry eyes swirled around the red dog and the pheasant. Of course, Barbos was also affected by the anger of the warring states. He was helpless in his heart, the addition of Barbos did improve the combat effectiveness of the navy but it also made the contradiction between the red dog and the green pheasant more and more intense. Before he could still suppress, as for now. Sengoku felt that the naval civil war was getting closer, and God knows what day the two fought. The great enemy is current, I don't want to see anything that affects the internal unity, and if this kind of thing happens, no matter who it is, the old man will not spare it. Sengoku glared at the red dog and the green pheasant, and in the end, he chose to pour his anger on Barbos, the navy is a highly hierarchical place, and you must be punished for bumping into your superiors. Don't want Barbos' salary this year. A year's salary is gone? Oh my god, how miserable! The yellow ape touched his chest in pain, and it felt even more uncomfortable than a fist from a white beard. Barbos shrugged, not caring about this painless punishment, in the end, it was just a round. The warring states can only mean it, symbolically go through the motions, Barbos, and quit the navy to lose a lot. Kuzan, tell me your plan. Warring states looked at the pheasant expectantly, he was old, it was only a matter of time before he retired, and the favorite marshal of the navy was the pheasant. Akainu had been observing Sengoku all the time, envious and jealous of his eyes that looked at his own son. Benevolent father, why did you give all your love to this kid Kuzan? Akainu clenched his fists unwillingly, no matter how hard he tried to fight, the boss was critical of him. In order to avoid the expansion of the situation, the navy can ignore it for the time being, and Big Mom is just a simple incompetent rage, and does not want to go to war with the navy in the real sense. I have to say that the pheasant reviews are quite in place. If you really want to start a war with the Navy, you have long been killed at the headquarters of the Navy. Facing Barbos three or four times, Ant always has to regain a little face as the four emperors. You mean to say don't move? Sengoku asked quietly. The green pheasant nodded, it can only be like this, once the Navy takes the initiative to cause a war, the hundred beast pirate group will inevitably take the opportunity to attack and the two four emperor regiments are enough to put the navy in big trouble. Warring states slowly bowed his head, there is some truth. The red dog, who had always been despised, couldn't help it, got up reluctantly, and looked angrily at the green pheasant with almost fire-breathing eyes, Kuzan, listen to what you mean, is it to let the navy face the big mom pirate group as a shrunken turtle? Charlotte Lingling, that old witch is riding on the head of the navy to show off her might, 
do you have to endure it? Qing Pheasant said righteously, at least there should be no war for now, once there is a war with Big Mom, the Hundred Beast Pirate Group will definitely hear the wind. That. Again. As. What? The Red Dog said rudely, come one, kill one, come two, kill a pair. Qianyu's words made everyone look stunned. I have to say that the person of Akainu is ruthless and criticized, but he is definitely the toughest iron-blooded general in the history of the navy. No matter who the enemy is, he will not be intimidated in the slightest, even if he dies in battle, he will definitely not bow to the pirates. I strongly agree. Barbos immediately agreed with the opinion of the Red Dog, we are the navy, we should be afraid of pirates. Pirates take the initiative to attack the navy, this is disrespectful. In addition to shock, the rest of the people did not dare to speak at all. The red dog is a general, the green pheasant is also a general, and as for Barbos, the strength is also a naval admiral in a vice admiral vest. Also, the old man never thinks that Barbos did anything wrong. Akainu continued to speak freely without scruples, it is the duty of the navy to eliminate pirates and he has successfully fulfilled the obligations of a navy and defended the dignity of the navy. From the old man's personal point of view, what Barbos did should be four words. The red dog raised four fingers, promotion. Raise. The corners of everyone's mouths twitch wildly, even if the salary is raised, it can still be accepted, what the hell is this promotion? Are they all generals made up and officially turned positive? Barbo silently praised the red dog in his heart, what a big brother. Sakaski, what are you going to do? Sengoku asked. It's very simple, since Big Mom attacked the naval base, he has to pay for his actions, no matter who he is, provoking the navy must be sanctioned. The eyes under the brim of the red dog's hat almost spewed magma, give me a boat, the old man is going to Cake Island. Big Mom destroyed the naval base, then the old man destroyed his cake island. The green pheasant took a deep look at the red dog, with you alone, you want to destroy cake island. Then add me. Barbo slowly got up and stretched comfortably. The scene suddenly fell into deathly silence, and Red Ianyu and Barbos were planning to fight the Big Mom pirates to the end. Sengoku clasped his hands into fists, thinking secretly in his heart. If Barbos and Red Dog can take Cake Island, the remaining strength of the navy is still strong, even if the Hundred Beast Pirates take the opportunity to attack, the navy will be more than enough to clean up Kaido. You too. Are you sure? Warring State's gaze was scorching, and he was obviously moved. The naval career has entered its final period, and Sengoku also hopes to retire to a beautiful big battle. Of course. Red Dog and Barbos spoke in unison. Half an hour later, a warship left the naval headquarters and headed straight for the Cake Island of the New World. The entire ship, adding up, is more than a hundred navies. Except for Barbos and Red Dog, all were ordinary sailors. Damn Big Mom, take the initiative to attack the navy, it's too presumptuous. In the cabin, the Red Dog still complains, sooner or later, the old man will clean up the garbage on the sea. Pirates can't be killed, General Sakaski. Barbos leisurely cocked Erlang's legs, even if we defeat Big Mom, someone will replace her and become the new four emperors. Hearing this, the red dog was silent, this is an endless cycle. Barbos, do you have any high opinions? Akainu asked quietly. I do have some opinions of my own. Barbos sorted out his thoughts, why the era of the sea thief began, it is not because of Roger's words before his death, he successfully aroused people's curiosity, and the world is full of curiosity about the so-called One Piece. If one day, one day the One Piece is exposed and the secret is revealed, people's curiosity will cease and the number of pirates will be greatly reduced. Akina rolled his eyes angrily, I thought it was a good way. It is undeniable that exposing one PS is indeed one of the best ways to solve the problem, but the world government will not agree. One more point. Akainu kindly reminded, don't say this kind of nonsense, 
when it reaches the ears of the world government, it will have a fatal impact on your naval career. I understand. Barbos responded. The two talked a few more words, and then went back to rest. Barbos lay on the soft bed, and was about to squint for a moment when the telephone bug on the table rang. What's the matter, Leiju? The Big Mom pirate group sent people to Baha'i and attacked me, and the family suffered heavy losses. Leiju's voice carried a sense of decadence and loss. Going to the North Sea again? The old woman's hand was really long. Barbo snorted coldly and said worriedly, How are you? I'm okay. Leiju shook her head, and then said helplessly, But my father was snatched away by them, speaking of which, the Big Mom pirates seemed to have come for my father at the beginning. Gagey. Barbos thought for a while and was relieved, although Gagey was abolished by me, his mind is still good, and has always been obsessed with the technology of giganticization, Gagey and Caesar belonged to the same research team in the past, and is planning to find Gagey to continue the research on human giganticization. Leiju, you go to the G20 base of the Navy temporarily, you really can't hide in the Navy headquarters, and in the next period, the sea will become more and more chaotic. I understand. Leiju obediently agreed. She is not the kind of brainless woman, and since she can't give Barbo's assistance in terms of strength, she definitely can't be her drag bottle. After a day of sailing, the warship finally arrived in the sea near Cake Island. Red Dog and Barbos did not hide, nor did they have any extra tactics, and directly rushed over. The scouts of the Big Mom pirate group naturally also discovered the warships of the Navy. When he pulled out his binoculars, there were two people standing on the deck Red Dog and Barbos. Castle in the heart of Cake Island. Hearing that the Navy was coming, the ant was shocked and angry. All along, the New World has been the territory of pirates. When did the Navy become so reckless that they dared to come to the New World to fight her? The most difficult thing for the ant to accept was that the Navy sent two people. Who is this looking down on? Boom! Under the attack of anger, the monstrous overlord colored domineering rushed straight into the sky, tearing the sky to pieces. The Navy must pay the price. Red Dog and Barbos, those two stinky imps, they must pay for their arrogance. The pampered ant was full of firepower, injecting a large number of souls into the deep sea. Whoops! The sea level rose rapidly, and the shocking tsunami that was 40 or 50 meters high condensed in the blink of an eye. Under this monstrous wave, the warship shook violently, like a lone boat, which could be overturned by the big wave at any time. Without waiting for the red dog to make a move, Barbos took the lead and flew into the sky. Buzz! The purple ball of energy quickly condensed in his hand, about the size of a fist. Barbos nudged forward, and the energy ball flew away. After contact with the seawater, it did not burst as expected, but merged into the big wave, and the originally blue seawater turned purple. Barbos pursed his lips and opened his mouth, destruction. The sea was calm in a blink of an eye, as if nothing had appeared. What about the old lady's tsunami? Auntie's eyes widened, and she once doubted life. Mom, that's Barbos's ability to erase everything. A deep voice came from the side. The man holding the trident stood solemnly and looked at the sea in the distance, is that the murderer who killed Krigia? The man was tall and his eyes were cold, it's just right. This person is the second person in the Big Mom pirate group Charlotte Katakuri, and the bounty is second only to the existence of Ant 1057 million Bailey. Those two lawless guys, just because the two of them still dared to attack Cake Island, when did the Navy become so arrogant? Beside Katakuri, another figure appeared. The bounty reached 932 million Bailey's Charlotte Smuggy. At the same time, many members of the Charlotte family also appeared one by one. The ant had a total of 43 husbands, 39 daughters, and 46 sons. Of course, some of these unlucky eggs died for various reasons, but there are still a large number of people alive. The model of the Big Mom pirate group is different from the general pirate group, the group maintained purely by family affection, 
the will to fight and the sense of family glory are much stronger than ordinary pirate groups. Come here, take away the heads of the two of them today. Auntie smiled wickedly. Instead, Katakuri pulled out the phone worm, let's get started. Thundered. Thundered. Boom. The next moment, ten thousand cannons fired in unison, and endless shells poured towards the sea. Thousands of shells flew in, as exaggerated as a rainstorm. The purple light was pervasive, and the vast destructive power in Barbosa's body continued to rush, swallowing the entire sky over the Cake Island in the blink of an eye. Boom! Orange flames appeared in the air, and incoming shells exploded. Wave after wave, endlessly, we are the Navy, how can the righteous Navy be beaten all the time? Purr! The red dog wrapped his arms around the magma, looked at the sky torn by the overlord color, and punched out, meteor volcano. Giant lava fists flew into the sky, and after reaching a sufficient height, they accelerated and fell, and the sky of Cake Island burned red. These two stinky imps who don't have any hair, they really want to destroy Cake Island. Angry and angry, Auntie roared into the sky, Zeus. Snap la la. Endless lightning raged in the air, like a large electromagnetic field. Thundered. Magma and lightning collide passionately in the air, shattered and sprinkled a rain of lava. There are also some fish that have slipped through the net, breaking through the defenses of the power grid and falling to the ground, and the entire Cake Island is in flames, and the whales of pirates are everywhere. In just a few minutes, the huge Cake Island becomes a hot hell. The members of the Big Mom Pirates have ugly faces, and some people have a strong crisis in their hearts. Nimibos, isn't the combat effectiveness of these two joining forces too terrifying? A few minutes into the war, the old life of Cake Island. Akainu is not an average admiral. This lieutenant general called Barbos seems to be also a carp-style lieutenant general. Abominable, abominable, abominable. Auntie's face is full of green tendons, war is like this, in whose territory to fight who suffers. Especially the decisive battle between the top bigwigs, destroying an island in minutes. Bang! The warship rushed ashore rudely, and before Chi Inu and Barbos could disembark, a dense crowd of pirates surrounded them. Akainu and Barbos stood together on the deck, and the two looked down at the pirates below indifferently, completely unconcerned. Stinky little ghost. The thunderous explosion exploded in the air, and the sky rippled. The ant held the giant blade Napoleon, stepped on the fire cloud Prometheus under her feet, and even her hair burned with flames, and the fire flew from afar. Seeing this, the red dog untied his tie, took off his red suit, and threw out the shirt he was wearing. A strong and strong muscle exposed to air. The tattoo on the left side spreads from the shoulder to the arm and abdomen. This woman is handed over to me. The red dog stared at the ant with resolute eyes, and his feet erupted with hot magma, like the thruster of a rocket, flying towards the ant. Then I'll clean up this group of trash fish. Barbosa's gaze fell on Katakuri and Smoji, and as for the other children behind him, he directly ignored them. Damn, he actually said we were trash fish. What an arrogant little brat. A big general is just a substitute, and he actually underestimates brother Katakuri and sister Smuji. Auntie's children glared angrily. Barbos didn't have any extra nonsense, and he likewise took off his upper body clothes. Today. It's also going to be a big killing. It is worth mentioning that Barbos also has a tattoo on his back a skull with a split skull. As we all know, the flag of pirates is generally a skull flag, what it means is self-evident. An atmosphere that was so oppressive that it was suffocating spread from heaven and earth. Barbos jumped down and landed in front of everyone in the Big Mom Pirates. The eyes were indifferent, and the dark eyes were as dead as black holes. Katakuri's pupils flashed red for the first time, Smuji, back off. Smuji was slightly startled, and although he was puzzled, he decisively retreated. Thundered. With a deafening bang, the earth rose into the sky. The place where Smuggy was located was blasted out of the pit. 
Barbos pounced in an instant, but unfortunately he was lonely. Katakuri responded immediately, stabbing the trident in his hand. Barbos calmly turned his head sideways, only listening to the sound of the brush, and the left ear of the trident passed by. Smuga quickly drew his sword, and between the fall of his hand, the huge slash tore through the ground. Boom! Barbos was crushed, and the giant slash swallowed him all over. Ha ha ha! Brothers, here comes your chance! Charlotte Davico laughed loudly and was about to attack, but Katakuri stopped him, don't act rashly, look carefully. The Big Mom pirate group looked together, and saw Barbos grabbing Smoochie's slash with one hand, and the other hand, wrapped with a rich destructive power. Devaka couldn't help but rejoice, it's fortunate that there is brother Katakuri, otherwise I would have been deceived. The opponent is not simple, be careful. Although Katakuri's voice was extremely solemn, the expression on his face was extremely confident and calm. Is the problem really with you, Katakuri? Barbos muttered, destruction. Click. The slash dismembers itself and splits into nothingness. Barbos locked on Katakuri, the opponent's pupils were still flashing red, and any of his tricks and actions seemed to be under the observation of those eyes. Seeing through the future is domineering, it is really not ordinary. Barbos sighed, his voice still indifferent. The Katakuri trident pointed at Barbos and said coldly, if you only have this level, this fate will be decided. Barbos smiled dumbly, this Katakuri likes to pretend. However, it is undeniable that Katakuri does have pretend capital. The top sight on the sea is domineering, even rarer than the overlord color, and Katakuri takes into account the overlord color, and in time, he may be able to reach the level of the ant. Purr. The earth softened inexplicably, and Barbos's feet sank into the white mud without warning. He frowned, rice cake? Barbos's gaze focused on Katakuri, affecting the surrounding objects, which was already a trick for the fruit awakening. Kataku glanced at Owen, who grinned, hee hee, it's my turn. Owen plunged his hands into the sticky ground, his arms burning with his fists. Adami Onsen. Boom. The ground softened by the Kataku chestnut glutinous fruit suddenly turned red, and the fiery field continued to spread. Barbos jumped hard and jumped into the air. I've been waiting for a long time. Above his head, Katakuri's cold voice came. Barbos was stunned slightly, and Katakuri's right arm swelled into the arm of the giants, and the armed colored flame heavy fist slammed into full force. Baked rice cakes. Boom. Barbos was hit hard again, and his body fell to the ground. Worthy of being brother Katakuri. Ha ha ha, this megalomaniac. He still wants to fight a hundred enemies, he deserves it. He has to pay for it. Take down Barbos, let's beat up the red dog guy with mom. The people of the big mom pirates were as excited as if they had beaten chicken blood. Led by Katakuri, they managed to suppress Barbos. Fools, don't be careless, the enemy is not as fragile as you think. Katakuri scolded displeased. Everyone suddenly fell silent. Katakuri is still quite a deterrent in the Charlotte family. Buzz. His pupils flashed red again, and he saw the picture of Barbos getting up intact. Katakuri couldn't help but feel stunned, the punch just now, Barbos ate it completely, how could there be nothing at all? And he also saw that Barbos did not use the armed color, and carried the punch completely by flesh. Could it be that this kid is the same as his mother? Katakuri was secretly surprised in his heart. In this world, some people are born with superhuman talents, and some of them are born with absolute strength, comparable to the giant race. Some people, on the other hand, have a very strong body, extremely strong defense, and can carry guns and bullets without using armed color domineering. For example, Anti, known as a steel balloon. Katakuri feels that Barbos is the same as his mother. Buzz. The red light of his pupils was still lingering, and the domineering spirit of seeing through the future still stayed on Barbos. 
He wanted to detect Barbosa's next move, and a strange picture appeared in his mind. I'm not serious yet, your fruit awakening and seeing through the future are all used, how do you play next? The demonic low groan resounded, and Kataku trembled inexplicably. Boom! The aura of destruction crushed the audience, and the picture that appeared in Katakuri's mind was forcibly interrupted. Rao is so, he also sees the true face of Barbos. He completely lost his human appearance and became an upright walker. Cat. Human body, jackal head and a tail behind the butt. The skin of the body is also purple. This is how Katakuri sees Barbos's new image. How, my new image? Barbos flew out of the shattered pit. It is exactly the same as what Katakuri saw. This guy seems to become. Cat. Thin arms and legs, I feel so weak. Cat cat fruit, phantom beast species, destruction god form, is this his true face? Those ears are so cute, I want to pinch them. Everyone in the Big Mom pirate group stared at Barbos curiously. Even the ant, who was grappling with the red dog, glanced a few more times over here. The zoonotic model. Humph, it seems that the fruit ability of the stinky imp has also awakened. The red dog threw out a lava punch, old woman, you are not qualified to lose your mind. Pluto. Bang. The magma exploded on Auntie's body, devouring half of her body. The ant screamed in pain, brandishing the emperor's sword Napoleon to counterattack. Elbaf's spear Waguo. The super large scale sword Chi swept the sky, killing the red dog in a mighty manner. The red dog did not hesitate in the slightest, and the same giant lava fist responded, Big Spitfire. Poof. The lava fist tore open, obviously Anti was superior, and part of the overflowing sword Chi continued to advance, successfully devouring the red dog. Wow. The red dog opened his mouth and wailed, and his chest was covered with wounds. Barbos couldn't help but glance at it, letting the red dog and ant continue to single out, it is estimated that it is a lose-lose situation. There's no time to play with you. Boom. Barbos, who was planning to support the red dog, was full of firepower, and the coercion of the god of destruction swept the audience, and the purple shockwave made everyone in the Charlotte family keep retreating. What's more, it is directly blown away by the tide of energy. It's so painful. Even if some people insist, their faces are extremely uncomfortable. This purple wind of destruction seems to be able to penetrate the skin, and after being poured into the body, the blood begins to flow backwards. Brother Katakuri, it's not a matter to drag it on, fight with him. Owen's hands burned like soldering irons, and his eyes were full of eagerness. Owen, Katakuri and Daifuku are triplets, and the success rate of the three brothers is 100%, and their strength is extremely strong. Barbosa's gaze swept and he glanced at Owen with a smile. Stinky boy, what are you laughing at? Owen glared angrily and yelled, Next, Uncle Ben is going to use my burning fist to give you. Well. Owen froze, and the heat on his fist inexplicably dissipated. Owen once again activated the power of the hot fruit, but as before, he couldn't use it at all, and his ability disappeared inexplicably. To hell with it. Owen couldn't help but scold. You useless fellow, drop the chain at the critical moment. Katakuri shouted angrily, greatly dissatisfied. I can't use my devil fruit either. Daifuku on the side had a gloomy face. What? Katakuri's pupils shrank sharply and asked loudly, What about the others, can you still use your devil fruit? Katakuri also began to activate his abilities, and after working hard for a while, his face was extremely bad, and his abilities were not used. I can't do it either. Smuggy was emotionally lost. You did it. Katakuri stared at Barbos in annoyance. What kind of evil ability is this? even the devil fruit is banned. Barbos remained smiling and silent. Damn it! Katakuri was furious, and his silence was acquiescence, even if we don't have the ability to fruit, we still have domineering, 
and use domineering to deal with him. So, that what? Owen said weakly, Sorry, Brother Katakuri, I can't use it domineering. Hey! Katakuri turned his head and asked incredulously, Everyone can't use the domineering. Everyone nodded. Katakuri's expression sank, and his body trembled with anger. Fuck, this isn't what cheating is. Then again, since Barbos transformed into a cat just now, his domineering spirit has also been interrupted. Katakuri took a few deep breaths and said calmly, I heard my mother say that after the overlord color reaches a certain level, you can use an ability called seeing and killing to forcibly seal the opponent's seeing and smelling color, and the red-haired shanks can achieve a similar level. I'm sorry, the coercion released by my god of destruction mode can kill whether it is domineering or devil fruit. The words fell, and Barbos disappeared in an instant. Katakuri subconsciously wanted to use the color of sight, but he couldn't feel anything. Seeing that the color is sealed, the armed color is sealed, the overlord color is also sealed, and even the devil fruit is killed for you, this is still a fart? Simply surrender and forget it. Barbo strolled away and swept towards the big mom pirates. Today, these pirates feared by the world are just a bunch of chickens without the power of chickens. Him with physical skills. Owen couldn't accept the humiliation, and rushed angrily with his fists. The rest followed. Be careful. This guy is the same steel balloon as mom. Katakuri loudly reminded that in fact, there is no way to do it now, so he can only bite the bullet. Barbos shook his head, he was not a steel balloon, but the attack of this group of guys was too weak to affect him. Bang bang! Owen Chabeo's big fist slammed into Barbos's forehead first. Even though his face was full of blue tendons and the strength to eat milk was taken out, Barbos still didn't blink. If you can't use anything, just surrender obediently, why waste time? The index finger was pressed against the mountain of Owen's head, and a breath of death rushed to his face. Owen felt the call of death, and subconsciously wanted to escape, and the purple energy fluctuations pressed him to move. Barbos snapped. Click. A crisp sound came from inside the skull, and Owen vomited blood and spurted out. Brother Owen. Many people exclaimed, and Owen's entire head collapsed. Die! Smooshy drew his sword and stabbed it, with a fierceness on his face. The purple light around Barbos was pervasive, and he spoke lightly. Destruction! Click! The iron-like heavy sword cracked little by little, spreading towards the handle. Smoogie was so frightened that he quickly let go, for fear that he would destroy it with him. Barbos took the opportunity to counterattack and slammed a heavy punch directly into Smoogie's abdomen. Bang! Way a a a! Smoogie screamed, and his fairly beautiful face deformed violently. Barbos's fist was forced, and Smoogie's whole person flew out. Got it! Pero Sparrow shouted and fell from the sky, slashing a blade at Barbos's head. However, his slogan was shouted a little early and Barbos glanced at him, and the next moment was also wrapped in purple light. Sabotage! Way a a a! Pero Sparrow also disappeared in screams. Big Brother Pero Sparrow! Pero Sparrow was killed, which made many people heartbroken. Even the ant in the distance roared, Barbos, the old lady can't spare you. Pero Sparrow is the eldest son of ant and her first child. Don't worry! Clean up this group of children, I will go and join forces with General Sakiski to get you. Barbos sneered, a fat beating is indispensable to the ant. Swish! A piercing hurricane erupted, and Katakuri poked Barbos in the head with a trident. Crunch! The long sharp tip stopped sharply in front of his cheek, and a few centimeters away from penetrating Barbos. Katakuri's face was gloomy to the extreme unable to use domineering and fruit, so much so that his combat power slipped to a trough. Barbos grabbed the trident with his bare hands. Sabotage! Click! The trident quickly splattered into slag, and the wind raised and spread out in the air. Katakuri is worthy of being the number one macho man in the Charlotte family, 
and he does not hesitate in the slightest, waving his fists and continuing to attack. Bang! The spread slap easily grabbed the incoming fist. Barbos grabbed Katakuri's arm, shook it in place, spun it around in the air for about ten times, and threw it vigorously into the sea. Poof! The waves on the surface of the sea exploded ten meters high, and the defeated Katakuri sank into the sea. Woohoo! Brother Katakuri! Devaka cried bitterly, and did not care about Barbos, and threw himself into the sea to save people. They are triplets, Owen is dead, and Katakuri must not have an accident. Has this fool forgotten that he is also a capable person? Barbos shook his head. I have to say that the Charlotte family is indeed united, if the other pirate groups were so restricted, the domineering and devil fruits were imprisoned, and the people would have run away. Who else? Barbos's gaze looked around the audience, although there were still many core cotters, but the most powerful group of people fell, and the rest did not dare to go up. Barbos rose on the spot, and the ball of condensed energy in his hand slammed into the ground. Thundered. The earth shook violently, and even the hundred meters of soil deep underground were brought out. This blow blasted out a large crater hundreds of meters from the surface. And the cotters of the Big Mom pirate group were also destroyed by the regiment, and one by one fell in the ruins, either being blown up alive or left with half their lives to survive. Barbos took a cursory glance to make sure no one could stand up, and then swept towards the red dog. Hoo hoo! Violent panting sounds filled the heavens and the earth, whether it was the red dog or the ant, both of them were sad, and their bodies were hung with color. But in comparison, the ant is much worse, because of the relationship between Barbos, the ant can't move her mind at every turn, and the red dog seizes the opportunity to export madly. Ha ha ha, you're finished. The red dog grinned and showed a row of white teeth, and his heart was extremely happy. If he and Barbos join forces, Auntie will surely lose. Once successfully taken out of Cake Island, Akainu's personal influence will reach its peak. At that time, will the warring states be kind enough to give the position of marshal to the green pheasant? A group of wine sack rice bags were actually killed by a little fart who was not even twenty, Katakuri and Smuga let the old lady down too much, all rice buckets. Auntie scolded and cursed not thinking that Barbos was too strong, but the stupid children did not argue. Looking at it, although Auntie has a lot of injuries, they are basically innocuous wounds, and as a steel balloon, her defense is indeed amazing. Swish! The fierce wind hit, and there was an extra figure beside the red dog. Looking at Barbos in the state of the god of destruction, the ant looked hideous, little kitten, the old lady will crush you and eat you. The red dog on the side also looked at Barbos with interest, he also knew that the animal line devil fruit had a human animal mode, which was said to be the most perfect state, with both human speed and dexterity, and also took into account the explosive power of the beast form. Join forces, Sakaski. Barbos took the initiative to speak. Of course, there is no need to pay attention to 1v1 heads up for pirates. The red dog readily agreed and sighed in his heart. When he first invited Barbos, he didn't expect that the two would join forces one day to surround and suppress the four emperors. Well. Laugh at the old lady, you two idiots, shouldn't you think that you can win the old lady with two to one? The ant laughed loudly, but her eyes were full of guard. The strength of the red dog is not weaker than her, and Barbos's combat effectiveness has just witnessed it, that is, the carp type vice admiral, and the combat effectiveness is also very amazing. If she doesn't get it right, she can really roll over. To be on the safe side, the ant took the initiative to attack, and the giant sword with flame slashed at Barbos, flame of the blade mother. Boom! Thousands of degrees of flame engulfed Barbos, setting his whole body on fire. Auntie smiled strangely, well. Little ghost. By you still wow. Severe pain came from behind, and the moment Ant made a move, the red dog also acted, and the magma fist slammed into Ant's back. Whoops! 
Auntie's body was burned extensively, and the rich smell of meat spread from her. Death to the old lady! The aunt was furious, ignoring the sharp sting, and the overlord colored domineering aura wrapped around the giant blade and blasted out. Bang bang! The domineering impact was fast and ruthless, and the red dog was slammed into no trace with one blow. Sabotage! Before Ant could catch her breath, the two Senran words behind her came, and Ant's fat body immediately trembled. A purple light spread out from her left arm, and Ant immediately used an armed color domineering defense. Click! The fingers were the first to dismember, even if they were domineering, it was useless, and the old woman screamed hooping. Sure enough, the combat power of the four emperors is indeed different. Barbosa's face changed slightly, and although Auntie's arm was being destroyed, it was much slower. Although the power of destruction can destroy everything, the stronger the person, the stronger the resistance, and the process of destruction will become slower. Old lady's hand. That's good for you. Poof. Blood splattered all over the ground. Knowing that the arm could not be saved, the ant decisively raised the knife and cut off her left arm with her own hands. The ant knelt on the ground in pain, gasping for breath, her scarlet eyes were bloodshot, and she roared in the most vicious voice, the old lady swears, from now on, either you die or I live. Throughout his life across the sea, he has faced strong people who ignored epic making. Whitebeard, Kaido, Golden Lion, Carp, Sengoku, Red Ionyu, etc., ants have all fought each other, and they have won and lost each other, but they were forced to destroy themselves like today, which is something that has not happened for decades. Do you still have a chance for revenge? Purr. The ground Magnus, ant is surrounded miserably, and the magma is like boiling water, constantly bubbling. Ant suddenly turned around, and the heavy sword in her hand blasted out with all her strength. Do you think the old lady didn't find you, Magma Imp? Bang! The red dog, who had just drilled out of the magma, had not yet had time, took another blow and was blasted out again. Taking advantage of the gap between Auntie's attack, Barbosa's energy bombs also fell on her. Thundered! The purple energy ball released a huge destructive power, and Auntie was blown up and took off. In the distance, the red dog stood up in embarrassment, and couldn't help scolding, it's clear that you provoked him, why do you keep beating me? The red dog rubbed his chest, dying of pain. Then again, the red dog's body is also a tenacious batch, topping the war, suffering from various critical blows from Whitebeard, even if the head is beaten and the blood flows, it is still alive in the end. Maybe General Sakaski has a face that is not beaten. Barbo Swan teased. The red dog ignored Barbosa's ridicule and said excitedly, after taking down the ant, it's no problem for you kid to be promoted to general. Hee <laughs> hee, Sakaski became a marshal, I guess there is no problem, after all, this is a great achievement. The two showed sinister smiles in unison. Barbos has little interest in being promoted to general and his goal has always been clear to eliminate the pirates and put this stupid and dirty pirate to an end. However, since the position of the general has been smashed, Barbos naturally wants to accept it, don't let it be in vain. Senior General Sakaski, after being promoted to marshal, did the first thing you do was open Kuzan. Barbos asked with deep interest, the contradictions between the two were irreconcilable. It's not a secret. The old man has never had such an idea. Chi Yu shook his head unexpectedly and said calmly, although the old man and Kuzan are incompatible, there has not been much communication for decades, and occasionally he talks and quarrels a lot, but his strength is undoubted, as long as he stays in the navy, he will always be a admiral. Barbos couldn't help but be impressed by the red dog, this old boy was surprisingly broad-minded. You two bastards! The earth-shattering roar mixed with the overlord-colored domineering swept over, and the dust and sand on the ground were raised. The already devastated ant was furious, and a pair of angry eyes wanted to swallow Barbos and Kayanu. These two people! In the chat! Auntie exploded angrily, 
isn't it clear that she didn't take the old lady to heart, the correct way to open just now should be to come up and mend the knife. But what are red dogs and barbos doing blowing? One lust becomes a general, the other becomes a marshal, as if he is a stepping stone to their success. I can still stand up. Barbo smacked his tongue secretly, his aunt's chest was blasted open, and he could even see the organs beating in it, and normal people had long been hanging. Instead of being affected, Auntie felt a stronger and stronger feeling under the trend of humiliation and anger. The extremely oppressive overlord colored domineering aura hovered in the air, Aunt raised her giant blade and the giant sword chi tore through the space. The ball of energy in Barbosa's hand catapulted away. Boom! An unprecedented explosion raged in the air, and Cake Island rumbled and split in two. The old man who beat just now hurts, Big Mom. The red dog flashed in time to make up his fist on the side, and the lava fist gathered enough strength to blast away, Hades' dog. Bang! Deadly lava exploded on her cheek, devouring Auntie's entire skull. In fact, the ant noticed the red dog and was already planning to swing her sword to meet it, but the speed of the dog's punch was too fast. Boom! The magma burned wildly, and Auntie's entire head was baked under the flames. Suffering such a fatal blow, Auntie, an undead freak, still stubbornly beckoned to the sky. The dark clouds immediately condensed over Cake Island, with a diameter of about 10 kilometers, which was extremely exaggerated. The clouds also grew mouths and eyes, and respectfully shouted, Mom, I'll help you. Whoops! A torrential downpour fell from the sky, extinguishing the flames on Auntie's body. The ant who came into view was miserable, and half of her cheek was burned by lava. Barbosa's eyes are weird. Isn't this the white beard package on top of the wartime? Auntie enjoyed it in advance. One to let the subordinates call mother, the other to let the subordinates call dad, you are also a perfect match. Barbos muttered, this punch is reasonable. Magma imp, you have to pay. Auntie roared at the dark clouds in the sky, the sky is full of freedom. Dense lightning like a spider's web fell from the sky, and the red dog's face changed drastically and he hurriedly retreated. Snap la la! The red dog was struck by lightning, covered in smoke, and even the skeleton was revealed. Lightning is fast and widespread, and there is no time to dodge. And you boy! Auntie looked at Barbos, and lightning poured down. Barbos's understated ball of condensed energy blasted into the sky. Idiot! Auntie pouted contemptuously, the old lady's home eyes cannot be destroyed, you boom. There was a loud noise in the sky, and the sky suddenly cleared. The bright sun fell from the sky, and the ant's face was dull. Off the big spectrum, her home eyes was destroyed? Auntie's mind roared, and she looked at the light and breezy barbos in a daze, could it be that she was really outdated? Today, she was rubbed underground by red dog and barbos, and she was beaten by no one else and she, the emperor of the sea, would be reduced to the shame of the four emperors. The beaten old man hurts so much, go to the sea to reflect and reflect. Shav! The red dog flashed in an instant, not giving Ant a chance to react at all, and the lava fist blasted out with all its strength, still attacking the wound that exploded in Auntie's chest. Grunt! The lava successfully burrowed into the wound and exploded in Auntie's body with a bang. The intestines and most of the organs were blown to pieces. The sharp-eyed Barbos even witnessed the heart of his aunt being shattered. Poof! The sea splashed in the distance, and Auntie fell into the deep sea. If this can't die, it only proves that God is on your side, Big Mom. The red dog flashed beside Barbos and took the initiative to stretch out his fist. Nice job! Barbos understood in seconds, and saluted him with fists. Good fight. This is the first four emperors that the two joined forces to get rid of. The four emperors were annihilated, and there is no doubt that this is a super event that is enough to affect the world. The sinking of Cake Island, as soon as it was reported, caused a worldwide uproar. When did the navy become so awesome that it destroyed the four emperors without making a sound? 
The most incredible thing is that it seems to be a group of two. Fake news, at a glance is fake news, the Big Mom pirate group has a reward of more than 10 billion Bailey, how can it be quietly destroyed? But it's a fact that Cake Island disappeared. The world. The strength of the admirals has always been underestimated. Red Inu is a reinforced version of the admiral, and Barbos is a perverted version of the vice admiral. It is still the strongest of the four emperors, and if it is 1v1, the general is not the opponent of the four emperors. Ha ha ha, the four emperors of your family have all been headshot by the general. The melon eating masses around the world are talking about it, and the general blow and the emperor blow have also launched a new round of tearing war. The weak will only play lip service and the powerful have already begun to act. On the sea leading to Cake Island, dozens of warships of the Hundred Beast Pirate Group marched forward in a mighty manner. That old woman lost to two rookie chickens, it's really humiliating, it's a shame that Laozi has stayed with her in the same boat before, shame. On the giant pirate ship, Kaido sits on the deck and gulps wine. The Big Mom Pirate Group was defeated and Kaido personally took his younger brother to receive the rest of the Big Mom pirate group. Originally, taking advantage of the war between the Navy and the Big Mom pirates, Kaido planned to attack a wave of naval headquarters, and Jack was killed, so he always had to ask for an explanation, didn't he? The devil knows that the Big Mom pirate group lost too quickly, and before the Hundred Beast pirate group could get out of the country of peace, the news of Ant's defeat spread all over the world. In addition to mocking his aunt's incompetence, Kaido immediately changed his mind and immediately swept towards the territory of the Big Mom Pirates. Boss Kaido went to the main text of the road sign, right. The man in black wearing a uniform similar to a military police uniform on the side asked. He is the second leader of the Hundred Beast Pirates, Ember, a man nicknamed King, and also the Flame Calamity in the Three Calamities. The drunken Kaido instantly became a lot clearer, the Navy is not interested in that thing, since Cake Island has been sunk, the main text of history should be left in the nearby seas. The signpost history text is a necessity to get to Ralph Drew, and it is also one of the few things that Kaido can see. The headquarters of the Navy is plentiful. The warships in the distance were getting closer and closer, and the warring states stood in the harbor with a group of high-ranking naval officials, and even the red carpet was rolled out. This time the Navy won a big victory, even if he, the Marshal, did not directly participate, but the Red Dog and Barbos are both the younger brothers under him, and he himself raised his eyebrows, didn't he? To say that the most complicated and uncomfortable is the pheasant. From the perspective of a Navy, the Big Mom pirates were destroyed, which is a blessing for the Navy and the world. However, who is not good for meritorious work, but it was his two dead opponents who did it, you say that the pit daddy is not the pit daddy? He had already received the exact news that Barbos had been promoted to general, which the world government had called to inform Sengoku before, and even Akainu had been rewarded. The most embarrassing thing for the pheasant is that he has also opposed fighting the big mom pirate group before. It's okay now, slap in the face. The green pheasant stood at the end of the crowd, in fact, he didn't want to participate, but if he disappeared directly, wouldn't it seem that he had a small belly? After the battleship landed, Barbos and Red Inu disembarked one after another. Welcome hero. General Sakaski. Lieutenant General Barbos. The cheers of the mountains and the sea resounded in the clouds, and the sea was shaking. The red dog, who was wrapped in bandages, still looked serious and old-fashioned. In fact, as he expected, his personal prestige had reached its peak. When the warring states retire, it is logical to become a marshal of the navy. After all, being a marshal, in addition to personal ability, must also have enough dazzling achievements, annihilating the Big Mom pirate group is definitely the most dazzling resume of the Red Dog's career. Well done, Sakaski and Barbos. You are the pride of the navy. Sengoku patted the shoulders of the two, and immediately opened the way in person and took the two to the headquarters building. At the Supreme Council, the warring states were again fancy and fancy. After all, 
the defeat of the Big Mom pirate group by the two is indeed a feat that is enough to go down in history. The Navy has always been rewarded for meritorious work, and punishment has been imposed if it has passed. Sengoku looked at the two with a smile, Barbos, congratulations on officially turning right and becoming the fourth admiral of the Navy. My God, the fourth general. Vice Admiral Barbos just joined, oh no, Admiral Barbos has only been in the Navy for a few days. I've been in the Navy for decades, and I'm still fucking a rear admiral. All the navies here are sour, and Barbos can do what others can't achieve in a lifetime in a dozen days, and the speed of promotion is too fast. In fact, if you refer to Fuji Tiger and Green Bull, Barbos is still a little worse, after all, these two brothers join the navy and are admirals. Sakaski, congratulations on your promotion too. Sengoku's words caused many people to look sideways, including Barbos, who was also stunned. The Red Dog is already a senior admiral, how else can he rise? In addition to the marshal, the highest rank in the navy is admiral. Ahem. With the consent of the five old stars, a special position will be created for Sakaski Executive Deputy Marshal, enjoying martial level treatment. The war Chinese was astonishing, and the words caused everyone to stun in place. Executive Deputy Marshal? Martial level treatment? Unheard of, unseen. Akina was also surprised, and he had never heard of any executive deputy marshal. The old man smiled happily, although he was still a vice, but anyway, it was one step closer to the dream. The biggest winner of this meeting is the Red Dog Barbos. A few joys and a few sorrows, the warring states seem to be smiling, but they are actually full of worries about the future of the Navy. He was not optimistic about Akainu being a marshal in his heart, and a tough war maniac would destabilize the whole world. In comparison, pheasants are much more suitable. However, this is a commendation from the world government, whether it is to promote Barbos to a general or to promote Chi Dog to become some executive deputy marshal, it is led by the world government. The warring states are secretly sad, in front of outsiders, the Marshal of the Navy has unlimited scenery, in fact, it is just a puppet of the world government. In addition, with the destruction of the Big Mom pirate group, the New World has become a pot of porridge. Sengoku said solemnly, the first to stand up for the legacy of Big Mom was the Hundred Beast Pirates, and the Red-Haired Pirates later joined this dispute. Red-Haired Pirates? Unbelievable! Don't those guys party all day and also come out to grab territory? Everyone was surprised, including Akainu, who had just become the executive deputy marshal, and felt incredible. The red-haired group has always been of the Buddhist lineage and rarely joins the battle for supremacy among pirates. The redhead is not interested in the territory, in fact, Kaido is the same, what they are pursuing is probably the text of the road sign history of the ant. Barbos spoke lazily, especially the red-haired man, he is not as indisputable as everyone thinks, in my place, he is the most insidious and mysterious man among the four emperors, even more dangerous than the bad old man with the white beard. Everyone was surprised, but they didn't expect Barbos to have such a high evaluation of redheads, and the risk factor was higher than that of white beard. From the perspective of strength and power, the strongest of the current four emperors is the Whitebeard Pirate Group. Barbos did not give any unnecessary explanations, as a traverser, he knew more than those present. In the original book, the redhead does end up joining the One Piece fray. First near the country of Wano, he shocked the Green Bull with his extremely strong domineering, and then used his overwhelming strength to defeat Kid. Afterwards, the redhead also snatched the text of Kid's history. In addition, the redhead's personal origin is also a mysterious existence, as a pirate, or the notorious four emperors, he can appear in Mary Joa to meet the five old stars, which alone is enough to prove his difference. The red-haired man is indeed extraordinary. The warring states seemed to understand something, and nodded with deep understanding, however, the conflict between the four emperors, the navy does not need to care about it at all. Just sit on the mountain and watch the tiger fight, no matter who loses, 
just go up and beat the falling water dog. The warring states stated their plans, which is also what the Navy often does. The Straw Hat defeated Clockdar and the Navy went to pick up the corpse. Straw Hat Luffy defeated Da Flamingo, and the Navy went to collect the corpse. Anyway, picking up corpses for such a thing, the Navy is professional. Kuzan, you can handle this. The warring states looked at the green pheasant with high hopes, and the red dogs were mixed into executive deputy marshals, and the green pheasants should also work hard. Barbos rubbed his chin, and also understood that the warring states wanted to brush the military merits of the green pheasant, and when he retired in the future, he would not have no hope of becoming a marshal. However, is the corpse of the four emperors so easy to pick up? The only difference between the four emperors and the admiral is that they have extraordinary physical talent, Ante's defense, Kaido's vitality, the strength of the white beard, the domineering of the redhead, and the strong physical talent coupled with good basic strength, which makes them the most difficult object in the world. Ten minutes later, the meeting dispersed. Everyone left, and the warring states only stopped Barbos. Is this going to open a small stove for me? Marshal of the Warring States. Barbos asked jokingly, Is it possible to get me a permanent deputy marshal as well? Be content, Sakaski and Kuzan survived for decades to become admirals. The red dog glared at Barbos, this kid really didn't know how to be evil. Barbos pouted, disagreed. For now, it won't be long before the record is broken by Fuji Tiger and Green Bull. However, Leaving you here does have something to do with promotion, and if you really go in, then I, the marshal, will not be able to mobilize you. Sengoku hesitated for a moment and said in a low voice, The big man of the world government took a fancy to your talent and invited you to join a certain organization, which is the direct guard of the Draco, the existence above CP0, and the core combat power of the world government. Barbos couldn't help but be stunned, could it be that Knights of God? For the Revolutionary Army, Barbos actually had no ill will. All he hated was pirates. But taking advantage of his own departure and running to his own jurisdiction to do things, this is excessive. The overthrow of the Tokai Oikot Kingdom was overthrown, and he, the Admiral, was definitely fully responsible. Barbos's jurisdiction takes care of the four seas, as well as some of the seas of the Great Shipping Route and the rights at hand seem to be very large, and they are responsible for the corresponding problems. In particular, the Revolutionary Army is involved. The world government can accept the pirates' misdeeds, but the tolerance limit for the Revolutionary Army is zero. The pirates just want to cut flesh and drink blood from the world government, but the Revolutionary Army wants to overthrow them. The next day, Barbos took the Navy to the East China Sea early in the morning. The journey was unimpeded, and in the afternoon of the same day, we arrived at the kingdom of Oikot near the East China Sea. In the cities near the coast, war broke out. After years of oppression, the people at the bottom could not bear it, and they clenched their weapons and killed the government army of the Oikot kingdom. People who advocate freedom, take up your weapons and resist, do not erupt in silence, but perish in silence. Clutch the weapon in your hand smash the head of the enemy, live a free and happy life. Open up by yourself. On the top floor, flag-waving women shouted. Her voice was not only penetrating, but also seemed to have magical power, and the rioters who heard the voice were like chicken blood, like dead soldiers, impacting the government army of the Oikot Kingdom, and even the navy that came to support was also defeated. This woman, one of the commanders of the Revolutionary Army, is named Bailo Betty, and the reward amount reaches 457 million Bailey. Bailo Betty is a superhuman inspirational fruit powerhouse, who can awaken the hidden power in people by waving the flag. Most of these rebels did not have the courage to fight the government army and navy, but they were influenced by the fruits of inspiration, and they launched a fierce charge without fear of death. The revolutionary army developed rapidly, and Bello Bertie contributed a lot and it was because of the ability to encourage the fruits that the ranks of the Revolutionary Army grew rapidly. It looks like the city is about to be taken down. 
Looking at the defeated navy and government army, Bellobetti took a cigarette in his mouth, took out a map and looked at it for a moment, at present, there is only the royal capital left, and tonight, it may be possible to officially overthrow the kingdom of Oikot. Then you're awesome. The cold voice sounded in his ears, and Bailo Betty subconsciously looked back. A heavy punch was greeted directly to the face. Bang bang! One building after another collapsed, and Bailo Betty flew hundreds of meters away. Yes, who is it? She trembled and got up from the ruins, looking at the figure in the distance and her pretty face changed, Admiral Barbos. Did you come back so quickly? Barbos put his hands in his pockets and flew over slowly. His eyes looked around, just you, where is that guy from Monkey D. Dragon, I have a lot to ask him. Ahem. Bello Betty coughed and got up, the commander is a busy man, there is no time to deal with you as a admiral, let me solve you. Barbos raised his eyebrows slightly, I don't have much hostility to the revolutionary army, don't be ignorant. Bailo Betty was slightly stunned, and the other party's clear eyes really didn't look like lying. Also, if Barbos wanted to kill her just now, nine times out of ten, it would be done. Barbos is indeed releasing goodwill. What are you looking for the commander? Bello Betty asked as she calmed down. I only dislike pirates, as for the revolutionary army. Let Monkey D. Dragon come over and apologize and then the revolutionary army obediently leaves my precinct, and I promise not to make a move. Barbos said lightly, this attitude is already a world away from pirates. However, Bailo Betty has a black face. I thought it was a big deal, but it turned out to be that the dragon came over specifically to apologize. What is most difficult for Bailo Betty to accept is that almost all of the huge kingdom of Oikot has fallen, and only the king capital has not taken it for the time being, how can the prey that is about to arrive be thrown out? Unreasonable and presumptuous demand. Bailo Betty loudly retorted, if this is what you want to say ridiculously, I can tell you loudly on behalf of the revolutionary army me. Refuse. Break off. Bello Betty's voice is soul-catching, pointing to the soul. Barbosa's demands are too nonsense. How can the country that the revolutionary military budget has won hard to take away just let go because of a few words? The most outrageous thing was to make the dragon apologize, and Bello Betty smiled angrily, with all due respect, little ghost. You also think too highly of yourself, do not think that the admiral is invincible. A good momentum erupted from Bello Betty. In fact, the commanders of the revolutionary army still have some strength and during the World Conference in the original work, the commanders of the Revolutionary Army injured two generals, Green Bull and Fuji Tiger. Barbosa's eyes were flat, and he just asked in the face of the strong Bailo Betty. Woman, even you want to dance? This didn't take himself to heart at all, making Bello Betty's silver teeth almost crush. Boom! Waving the battle flag of the Revolutionary Army vigorously, she had previously dealt with the mob of the navy and government forces, turned her gun, and rushed towards Barbos densely. Bang bang! Boom! Bullets, along with shells, exploded around Barbos. Barbos had a secret headache, and it was easy to kill this mob. But he is a senior admiral, how can he attack civilians, especially most of them are still inspired by the fruit of inspiration. Of course, this also depends on people, the red dog big brother came, it is estimated that it is a big breath of fire, not to mention people, even the town may burn you down. In the face of the rushing mob, Barbos temporarily dodged the edge and soared into the sky. What a benevolent admiral! Bailo Betty was quite surprised, in the eyes of the strong, aren't the civilians all grass mustard? You also quite surprised me. It seems that the Revolutionary Army is not a group of good birds, using a group of civilians as a gun, at best, it is just a group of rabble composed of three abuses. A cold light burst out of Barbosa's pupils, and the purple destructive power spread out. Bailo Betty didn't seem to realize that danger was coming, after all, it was also the first time to face Barbos, the opponent is a admiral, and Vile is helpless. 
boom. She waved the flag again and shouted, Defeat the enemy in front of you, victory and freedom are at hand. Kill kill kill. The people shouted, and in order to attack Barbos in the sky, some of them even lay on their stomachs and were willing to be human ladders. In the blink of an eye, a mountain of people was tens of meters high, the ground was bloodied, and hundreds of people were trampled to death alive. Barbos also discovered the weakness of the encouraging fruit, it seems that only when your voice is heard can the brainwashing be completed. That's right. Bello Betty admitted frankly, what if you know, can you still make me shut up, or shut my voice? Barbosa's eyes narrowed slightly, shut your good voice? Very good idea, then take away your voice. Barbosa's fingers swept towards Bello Betty, and the force of destruction wrapped his whole person. Bello Betty was covered in armed color domineering, what do you think you are? Sabotage. Poof. A sudden spurt of blood erupted from his throat, and the whole mouth was torn and painful. Bailo Betty looked at Barbos in shock, you woo. Whining. Whining. Bailo Betty's heart made waves, why was he speechless? Your vocal cords were destroyed by me, permanently damaged and cannot be recovered. In this way, the fruit of encouragement will be wasted. Barbos swept over to Bailo Betty, his eyes full of indifference. Poof. Bailo Betty sat in despair on the ground, what had just happened. His own voice was so inexplicably taken away. Barbos obviously didn't touch her. After getting Bailo Betty, Barbos did not rush to kill her and took the woman to the royal capital of the kingdom of Wakat. Knowing that the admiral, especially Barbos arrested Bailo Betty as soon as he came up, the nobles of the kingdom rushed to cheer. Why is it said that the nobles cheered? because the commoners did not want the kingdom of Oikot to perish, and this inactive king would only exploit. Mr. General, thank you for making a move. In the lavish palace, King Wakat asked respectfully, what about the woman of the revolutionary army? I propose to execute directly. Barbos glanced at King Oikot indifferently, and said lightly, there is still value, hang it on the city gate for the time being. The Revolutionary Army is a group of guys with heavy feelings, knowing that Bailo Bertie has been arrested, it is estimated that they will come to save people. Just served them in one pot, save me to find them. Barbos sat on the throne of King Ojakot, and the big fat man with the crown did not dare to squeak. After closing his eyes for a moment, Barbos opened his mouth and said, At present, your country is in a mess, even if you defeat the Revolutionary Army. The next wave of riots is a matter of time, I am very busy. It is impossible to stay in the kingdom of Wakat all the time. Oikot hurriedly asked, so what are your tricks to solve? The reason why people riot is just that they think that there is no hope in life, and in the final analysis, they are a poor person, and they can just give away the wealth you have accumulated. As if stepping on King Ujakot's tail, the dead fat man immediately shouted, no way. I won't give money to those untouchables. Barbos raised his hand directly, I used to be a pariah in your mouth. Sabotage. Way. King Oikot disappeared with a scream. Half an hour later, all the wealth accumulated by the royal family and nobles was distributed to the mob. It was such a simple move that caused most of the mob to disperse. If you have money, who will hold on to happy days and not go to riot? As for the tragic death of King Oikot, Barbos dumped it on the Revolutionary Army. Welcome to Fanfiction Uploads your ultimate destination for immersive anime audiobooks. Are you a fan of anime and love diving deep into captivating stories? You've come to the right place. Here on Fanfiction Uploads, we bring you high-quality audiobooks based on your favorite anime series. Whether you're commuting, relaxing at home, or just need a break, our audiobooks will transport you into the world of anime like never before. At Fanfiction Uploads, we offer professionally narrated and carefully selected audiobooks that cover a wide range of genres and series, from action-packed adventures to heartfelt romances. With new episodes and stories uploaded frequently, there's always something fresh to enjoy. Join our community. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Connect with fellow anime enthusiasts in the comments section, share your thoughts, and let us know which stories you want to hear next. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Sit back, relax, and let the stories unfold. Welcome to Fanfiction Uploads where anime comes to life.